Hello, I am Chrysosaurus. I I am running Treasure Hunt for Pokemon Scarlet, and uh, let's just get right into it because this is a four hour. This is at worst a four hour category, and uh, yeah, this is essentially the do everything except the early game and the late game because they are both boring. And this is clearly the better any percent category that you guys should be running anyway. Because of this, we are starting in the school time. We are starting in the school timing. So. This essentially means we skip the first 48 minutes of the game because who wants to play that? No one wants to play that. So we'll be starting the timer on first input. So in three, two, one, go. As we will be flying over to Mezagoza and starting our adventure. So we're going to get out of Mezagoza. We're going to take this essentially load that takes up to 23 seconds to do. And then once we do this uh, load, we will then go ahead, fly all the way back down to Lost Plateaus, an area that we went to the early game. Oops, I apparently cannot fly to a certain location today. And we're going to head over and catch ourselves our main Pokemon. So going through this way, there are two ways to go through here. There's going through the back way, and then there's going through the front way. The front way is faster by 7 seconds-ish, but it does have a caveat being the fact that you must, uh, you must use an Ultra Ball to catch the Flamigo, which is only a 60% chance of getting in. So instead, we're going through the back way, which is way better for consistency, because you are able to grab this quick ball, which guarantees the Flamigo catch, which is very much, which is very much going to be important. Is that, that will be our main Pokemon throughout the entire speedrun. However, we'll be seeing a bunch of other Pokemon uh, fulfill specific roles that Flamigo can't throughout the speedrun. We're going to grab that quick ball. We've also seen earlier me doing something known as a BLJ, also known as a backwards ledge jump, where on a ledge that we can technically slide down, if we are backwards, we can actually jump up, which allows us to essentially get to places faster than we're normally supposed to. Here we're going to dismount and slide off so that we can then cancel the superhero landing that Coridon likes to do. We're then going to fall off here, and then we're going to grab this rare candy. We're going to fall off here, and we're going to go into essentially what is the swamp area. So how this game does encounters is this game does encounters randomly, based on what biome you are, but there's also certain Pokemon that are set encounters. Like for instance, these three Flamigos right here will always be set encounters and will always be level 17, so all we have to do is face backwards, go ahead and catch it, and here's our Flamigo. And here's going to be our Quick Ball that we're going to be using to catch our Flamigo in. So one, two, three, shake, this is guaranteed, I don't have to worry about it. One bit. And as for Kogo also gets ourselves some experience points as well from catching the Flamigo. So once we catch this Flamigo, we're going to kind of continue going through here. There is one other thing that we're going to grab, and that is the fact that there's an EXP Candy Lodge right over here. So here we're going to grab we're going to drop down here, we're going to grab Experience Candy Lodges, and you're going to see how busted an Experience Candy Lodge in the early game can be. But for now, we're going to head off. And fight ourselves the first... So in this game, there are 18 badges to collect, two more than the previous game of Hot Gold and Soul Silver. And the 18 badges are divided by the three storylines of this game. There's Path of Legends, Starfall Street, and Victory Road. Path of Legends is where we're going to have to fight five Titan Pokemon to, uh, you know, to not only get our right abilities back, but also to help Arvin for whatever means he has. We don't know them yet. There's the Starfall Street storyline, which uh, we'll talk about that way later. And the Victory Road storyline, where we will have to do the traditional eight gyms, defeat the Elite Four, become champion storyline. So that's pretty much that in a nutshell. We're going to remind myself not to pick up the Hasty Mint that's right here because I do not need it for this category. That is an any percent thing, not a uh, treasure hunt thing. 
There are, this is called this is called treasure hunt, which is essentially any percent with a few differences. And because we don't have to deal with end game, we don't have to grab end game items, and thus we will not be grabbing the hasty mint, which is only required for the end end game. Here we're going to touch by that tower because that is a fly point that we'll be using later. And then we are going to fall down here, see if we can do the fancy fall. Not quite. You can use that rock to essentially cancel out the hard landing, but if you do it in a way, you can actually do it to go forward instead of backwards or what I did. Pretty hard. And it's like minor time save. Anyway, here, we're gonna go here. We're gonna go bag. We're gonna go into our bag. We're gonna use our L candy, go from 17 to 25 on our Flamigo. We're then going to go put it in the spot and we're going to check its stats. We're going to then do that. We get plus attack minus speed, which is I, which is a really nice nature. And then we're going to teach low kick, put wing attack to slot one, and there's going to be our first titan boss, being Clawth. Hopefully I'm not too fast in explaining everything. Thankfully there are places I can do to slow down, but for the Clawth titan, we are going to essentially use low kick turn one, which essentially just one hit KOs it, because low kick is a very good move. Low kick, for those who don't know, is a move that is based on the opponent's weight, and for all of the titans, when we use low kick, the lowest base power, which is actually against Clawth, is 80 base power. So having an 80 base power and fighting type move in the beginning of the game is pretty strong. And will also be our main fighting move for pretty much the entire game. The main difference between phase one and phase two of a Titan Pokemon is the fact that not only do we have help, which is pretty much just useless, but we also have to face the Titan again, but this time the gimmick is that its HP has been increased by how much is dependent on the Titan. In Cloth, I believe the Titan's HP is increased by 50%, not, not, by, a, not by 100. So here we're going to be using Wing Attack just to do a little bit of chip damage because we actually cannot one-hit KO the Titan. Well, we can if you have like Busted Attack, but I don't think I have Busted Attack anymore. And so instead we're going to chip it so that we don't proc its ability because its ability is slow and then we're going to use low kick to then take out and not take the cloth titan out its ability if it activates its ability it's slow because due to the fact that animations are turned on we have to see its stats increase and decrease when when we see the ability but aside from that that is the first titan done and the first gym badge acquired the first badge acquired not gym badge As this cutscene will play, I will be quickly having a look over my stats because I set up a replay buffer so I can actually have a look at them. And I did see something good. I saw two things that are very good. The first is Scrappy and the second is Plus Attack. Denying Attack. Ew, okay, these are not good stats. We're going to see a bit later that stats will matter, especially when it comes to shopping. And then the rest of the stats don't really matter. The only two stats that do matter is attack and speed. The rest do not matter. Forty three and 48. And the next time we'll be checking our stats is at level 49. So, the main thing to note is that due to our attack our speed, we are going to be doing a certain... We are going to have to worry about our shopping because we'll be buying some vitamins later. And depending on our speed stat and our attack stat, that's how many vitamins we're going to buy. Unfortunately, Due to this, this might have to mean I have to do a backup strat if my stats are too low for this route to work, but that should be fine. So, if I do quick math, if I 6 attack means I need at the minimum... Is this the right? No, this is the wrong. This is the wrong chart. Oops. This is the right chart. Six means I need ten minimum. And Carbos, I have no speed whatsoever. Is fourteen. 
We will have a second chance to have a look at our stats just to see if they get any better or any worse. We hope we like to see it get better. We do not like to see it get worse. Because if it gets worse, then um, unfortunately, we might have to do a slow backup just to make sure that this run finishes. But if it's fast enough, then we can, you know, but if it's good enough, we can technically skip the slow backup. So after we now fight the first Titan, we get... Apparently Arvin's not really m happy about the fact that uh, uh, we're giving our sandwich to uh, Koridon, and also the fact that... Apparently now, by eating those Herba Mystica sandwiches, uh, we get ourselves our, our abilities back. And this one is apparently the uh, Monster Energy Drink sandwich, because now we have the ability to run faster. So here we're going to go round, round all this. We don't really care too much about this. We're then going to go use a backwards ledge jump to get all the way up here to grab this pearl string. And essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a section known as the candy hunt or around the world or Halloween. Doesn't really matter what names you're going to give it because it's essentially the same. You do not need to pick up any money items, uh, money items except for that one pearl string. And we are going to be heading all the way, essentially grabbing key fly points. I did not see that. All right, that's one encounter. That's fun. Well, that's my fault. I was not paying too much attention. But yeah, essentially, we're going to try go around the world and essentially try and avoid as many encounters as we can. It is pretty hard to avoid encounters in this game, especially when you're trying to commentate and talk at the same and try to pay attention at the same time. So I'm going to try my best to, you know, Try and give insightful commentary while also playing this while also playing this game because a Pokemon can literally spawn anywhere and I have to react to it, which you know, that's fun. So here we're gonna grab this rare candy, gonna jump around, and then we are going to fall down specifically on a ledge right about there and fly around to the other side of Zapapico because flying is sometimes slightly faster than running. We're then going to head over this way. We're going to go ahead and essentially be very wary of trees. Trees love to randomly spawn Pokemon and can be bad. Now we're going to have say hello to our good friend Ratio Rock and see how much of this rock is going to ratio me. Uh, so far, it has not... So far, so good. We can go ahead, backwards ledge jump up there. Then do a few more backwards ledge jumps up over here. We're then going to say hello to the floor that's right next to the team of acrobatics I'm going to need. And then we're going to drop down, grab the XP Candy L, and continue going continue going forward. We're then going to say hello to Vista Tuttles as we're going to head up towards the mountain. And we're actually going to be heading towards uh, the Glaciado Mountain Gym, which is the Ice Gym. But we're not actually going to be doing that yet. But we'll be grabbing the Fly Point, going in, and then going back out. We're also going to grab this Full Heal because technically... This might be a, like a minor, this is a minor time save for later. I should be grabbing the Poké Dolls, but I'm not gonna. I should probably be doing that though. So we're gonna grab the Experience Candy L here. Because of my attack stat, there is gonna be a candy I'm gonna pick up. But normally I, then I can technically sometimes skip, but not today. So we're gonna grab this, we're gonna grab the Mem Candy. We're gonna jump over here. We're going to grab these two M candies right over here. And we're going to be grabbing a lot of candies, by the way. Essentially, the beginning of this speed run is just grabbing candies. It's not for too long. We'll be getting to some action later, but Game Freak blessed us by putting a bunch of uh, candies everywhere, and so we're going to be using that. Because I am the ability Scrappy, I'm actually going to go out of my way this way to grab this Experience Candy L here. Normally, you do not, if you are Tangled Feet, you would not grab this L candy as there is actually a three second faster one you can grab later. But because I do need the candy early, I will grab it. Here, I'm actually going to grab the Poké Doll that's underneath this tree just in case I need it. We're going to grab the M candies right over here. And we are going to head into the gym. Into the Glaciado gym. But before we do that, we do need to grab the... We need to touch the center, as the center gives us the fly point. Unless you are in a town, the center is what gives you the fly point. 
there's one exception there's one town that has an exception but aside from that we can do that so we're going to grab this center right there we're then going to head into the ice gym this essentially means the reason why we go grab the ice gym and start the puzzle start the gym test is when we fly back to this place later we don't have to jump down activate the puzzle jump back up we can just do that right now and it will save us time we will not be doing the ice puzzle for a while so don't worry about that I'll talk to you I just did a thing. They think that this is the first gym, but let's be honest, this is not the first gym. The first gym actually take actually it will be about in the 30, 30 minute mark. Well actually it might be less because it the gym itself takes a while to do. But whatever, it doesn't matter. What does matter is we're then gonna be heading towards uh this direction. Uh this direction has an objective that we have to do, but we're not gonna do that for a long, long while. But we do want to collect the candies in this direction, so that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to land here to not get the hard landing. We're then going to fall, go right down all the way down here to grab ourselves this medium candy right over here. We're then going to run ourselves in a very specific crease so that we can actually just run up instead of having to backwards ledge jump. We're going to grab the quick balls, avoid all the encounters as possible, uh, Rever Room being the worst other things to spawn because they uh, do not have respect for you one bit. We we'll land down here. Sadly, got the hard landing, but that's fine. Grab the hyper potion. It's going to be useful for when we heal the one time. Then we're going to jump here. We're going to land in a very specific spot so that we can then cancel the hard landing. There we go. We're going to grab this EXPL candy right over here. We're then going to say hi to Haluchas. I'm going to grab these medium candies over here. We're then going to jump. My, actually, I shouldn't have jumped because I'm going to get a hard landing. Yep. Grab the center. And then finally, we're going to go grab the, that experience medium candies. And we're going to fly all the way back to Zappapico East. And now this is where we do our... Our menu. So here we're going to go into the bag. We're going to give one medium to Foy Coco. We will then evolve into a Crocolo. We give it now because it's the most convenient time to do it. And after we give uh, one medium to Crocolo, we will then be giving ourselves uh, all the, the rest. Doop. The rest of the candies to Flamigo to be 49, and then we're going to give the Acrobatics TM, which is the most busted move in the entire game. Essentially, we will have a stab attack that's 110 base power with basically no downsides, with the exception that we cannot have a held item, but we are never going to give our Flamigo a held item because we don't need it. Because Acrobatics is that strong. We'll still be keeping Wing Attack, as Wing Attack is a faster animation, but we'll be... Essentially, the moveset that you see, this will it'll be the... Oh, okay, that, that's another encounter. Whoops. The moveset that you see will be the moveset that we'll be keeping throughout the entire game. Uh, that's unfortunate by me. That's probably my fault. I wasn't paying attention. I'm going to grab the Pokemon Center right over here. That'll be for later. And then we're going to be heading towards the Steel Titan. Now, if you've seen this category before from other people, like any percent, uh, what you're going to see me do might be a little bit weird and a little bit questionable. Normally, there are three rare candies and an EXP medium candy that we'd grab after we trigger the Titan. I will be grabbing this candy, but I will not be grabbing the rest of them. Instead, I will be heading straight to the Titan itself. Uh, the reason for this is it's faster, and also... It's actually kind of faster to skip two rare candies and just go this way instead. So here we're going to go, go here, going to jump. We're going to then trigger the off worm to then go here. And then we're going to trigger the off worm again. To then go to this wall so that we can then start the first fight. This, my friend, is off worm. Say hello to off worm, Jim, everybody. 
He is so happy to be here. It's too bad we're going to low kick him. And because of our super high level, this Titan, this Titan is not a problem whatsoever. There goes phase one. And then afterwards, there goes phase two. Once we get there. Do be very careful, as I have learned this from uh, yesterday. Is that you want to make sure that Coridon's feet is touching the ground when you are getting to all form. So if you jump a bit early, uh, it will not count. So you need to make sure that you are running and not jumping. But this will be a uh, phase two. It's the exact same thing as phase one. The only difference is Orphan has double the HP, but just to be clear, we are fighting a level 29 Pokemon and we are level 49. So I think with our level advantage, we're going to be fine. So here's Wolfworm. Arvin's gonna say, oh my god, how victory's gonna taste good. It's gonna taste really good after we kill it in one go. This, I believe, does range. This, I don't think it only becomes a range only when you have, um, like, significantly lower level, but that's fine. And that is, a uh, Wolfworm Titan. Now, thankfully, when we tech taught acrobatics earlier, I also took another replay buffer, which allows us to essentially have a better look at what our stats are. And that's going to be important to see how many carbos I truly need to buy, as my speed can be either 0 or 7. And it is 2 to 3. As well as my attack being 7 to 8. So, and then I would just put the rest of the stats in, just just because why not. Special attack is 9, and special defense is 71. Again, like I said earlier, the only two stats that actually matter is attack and speed. The rest of the stats 100% don't matter. Uh, that's pretty much the main thing about the uh, stats. So, what does this mean for later on for me? Uh, with 2 to 3 speed. I still have... Okay. Hmm, that is unfortunate. Unfortunately, due to my low stats, I will have to do a... Somewhat of a backup strat, but we'll get to what that backup strat is later. We'll get to what the backup strat is later, but essentially my stats are a bit too low to do um, what I would normally like to do. I'll explain more about why my stats matter overall later on, but do note that if this was a normal attempt in treasure hunt, uh, I would reset this bird. And honestly, I would reset this bird in any percent as well. Which, may I remind you, a reset in any percent is a 50 minute reset. So... Yeah, but thankfully I have developed a backup strat in case this, this, this scenario does happen, so we do not have to, like, press, uh, do, do my favorite button combination called Home Y and A. I think switch one is know exactly what that button combination means.
But that's it. That's going to be for our second Titan. This is actually meant to be the third Titan you face based on levels, but uh, we're speedrunners. Why, 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 we why would we do anything in the correct order? Oh yeah, we also now get the uh, plop device where apparently Arvin's trying to get his dog better. That, that's now that's now the that's now the plot, guys. We now have to help Arvin get his dog better. But uh, we're not gonna be doing that for a while, so uh, you know, enjoy enjoy your papa. Uh, dog percent is something called Path of Legends. For that, but we've already seen that category done by by uh, somebody else in this marathon. I'm blanking on the name, which is really bad on me. Anyway, uh, boxes. We're now gonna do, say goodbye to Crocolo for the time being. But before we do that, we're actually gonna go into the summary, and we're gonna be teaching it a move known as Incinerate. More on that later. But now we're gonna head onto our Coridon, and we finally have the ability to high jump. This is gonna be a really nice ability because it essentially allows us just to do simple platforming to get up and up through walls pretty easily so i have not failed that jump in years so we're going to jump up here we're then going to jump specifically on this platform right there so that we can then jump up here and then we're going to do a small little jump and we're going to land on the ramp right around here to try and avoid the hard landing which we did successfully we're going to go run all the way into lavincia and then we're going to go into lag city And this is also probably the time to mention the PSR Marathon that they're about to do a collaboration stream with somebody else. Without them knowing. So here we're gonna go drop off our Coridon. Gonna go into the thing, get the nicest camera angle to ever be seen. This game loves its uh, funky camera angles. Believe me, we're gonna get some more funky camera angles later. And now that we've done, now that we've talked to it, now when we go out, we're going to be sharing a stream with Iono, or as we like to call in the Spearing community, Lono. Because the capital I is just a lowercase l. So the main gimmick of this gym is that we're essentially, it, they're trying to make this like thing a whole elaborate thing, but it really we're just playing Where's Waldo. That, that, that's, the, that's the stream game. Don't worry, the gym puzzles in this game are, are funky. They get funkier later. One, There's one that's very infamous. Actually, there's a few infamous ones here, but this one's like the least infamous one. Compared to the others, this one's actually the most tame one yet. But... If you've played this game or seen this game, we know what exactly what we're talking about. Uh, one thing to know is that this is this gym is actually the reason why there's actually a difference between Scrappy and Tangled Feet. So my ability that we have is Scrappy, but another ability that I could get, which is a 50/50 shot, was Tangled Feet. And Tangled Feet is slow because the way to describe Tangled Feet is if I hold up a blank piece of paper. And I put it next to Tangle Feet, they both read the same thing. It does nothing. Scrappy actually does have a useful niche, the useful effect to its ability that we actually care about, which is the fact that it's immune to intimidate. And there are a fair few intimidators in this category. Six in total. And the reason with an asterisk. And the reason why it has an asterisk is that this can sometimes not have intimidate, which is fast if it doesn't. And it doesn't. Nice. Nice, uh. Three second time save. But Iono but Iono does have a Luxio who always has Intimidate, and that is a Pokemon that we have to uh deal with and Yeah, that's why there's a root discrepancy between Scrappy and Tangled Feet. It ends up making Scrappy slightly faster, but not by much. At most, it's 10 seconds faster. Also, here's a funny glitch. This game's great. <laughs> I 
But as I was saying before I got distracted by uh, that funky little glitch, um, yeah, there's a root discrepancy. Essentially, in Tangled Feed, you have to get more candies early. We still get the same number of candies overall, but you just have to get them earlier. As uh, the Tangle Feet bird versus the Scrappy Feet, the Scrappy bird. There's also a time save that's technically uh, ironic. Uh, I would I wouldn't say ironic, but it's like a time save that many people don't know about. With that, Scrappy can also do. By the way, this thing has a 30% chance to paralyze you. If you get paralyzed, you just lose time because you get a free heal afterwards. So, no paralysis there. There are plenty of 30% chances in this game that suck. That one's the least sucky one of all of them. Anyway, we're going to find uh, Waldo one last time. Which is right here. And that is the gym test done. So after we do a gym test, we now have the right to fight the gym leader. And that's how the gyms go. And no, Scrappy is not used for its ability to hit ghost-type Pokemon with normal fighting moves, as it will be using flying-type moves instead. So, whoops. We will not be using Scrappy for its intended purpose. So here, after we've done the gym, we're going to now talk to say, Hey, we did an amazing job boosting Iona's numbers. Now we get to fight the gym leader and uh, absolute embarrass Iono in front of uh, millions of people. Because she, as the electric type gym leader, is going to lose to a flying type. Because that's how it works. If there aren't... The thing about this game, and the reason why I like it so much, is also the fact that there aren't any difficult fights. There are some fights that can be annoying, and there are some fights that are pace breakers. But there aren't any fights that will flat out kill your run, because you'll die. So that is like a nice thing about this game is that there's no run that will kill you directly. There's just a bunch of runs that will lose you a bunch of time. So if you want to have runs that actually finish, uh, yeah, treasure hunt's not a bad not not a bad category. Just don't do any percent. The beginning and ending is not worth playing any percent for. As someone who got a PB in any percent yesterday, it was a it was a hog. It was like not great of an experience, but thinking of a good experience, uh, this fight, this fight is going to be uh, fairly easy to do. So we're going to hit one of two Pokemon in the entire game that resist our fighting flying combination. And then uh, after that, we're then going to use a fighting, we're going to use two fighting moves to KO the other two Pokemon, and then we're going to be using a flying move against electric type again. So here we see Belly Ball, we're going to use Low Kick. This is again a weight based move, but most most opponents that we're going to be fighting with Low Kick are pretty heavy. Or they just do enough damage. So here's our Luxio, here's our Intimidate, gets Scrap, we have our Scrappy ability, we don't get our attack drop, which is nice. So we get Luxio, Luxio then goes down, and then we get to see essentially, uh, thanks to Gen 7, Gen 8, and Gen 9, the essentially, and also Gen 6, the gimmicks. And in Gen 8 and Gen 9, they really love to show you their main gimmick in their fights. And so we have to every time see a minute of essentially them terrestrializing and the fainting of the terrestrialization. Yes, we get it. We get to you get to change types. I know, fun. Can you please make this animation faster, Game Freak? Oh look, their fancy hat. Goodbye. That doesn't mean anything to me. Now that, we have now done our first gym. And so far we have three badges down and uh, 15 more to go.
I am. For some reason, we are required to always have a selfie with the main person every time we get a gym badge. Which, you know, fun. So we get... We also get ourselves TMs for beating our gym leaders, and we are going to be selling them. They are... Essentially, TMs are now back to single-use items because they have this whole crafting mechanic that we don't care about. But for the most part, we're going to be selling most TMs. The only TM we're going to be teaching is acrobatics and acrobatics again. We'll get to the second acrobatics in a while, in a little while. Anyway, Nimona calls us, you know, definitely not stalking us or whatever. Saying congratulations on being the gym. Cool. Great. Yeah. Fun. Let me leave. Thank you. And we're going to grab the one rare candy I've been trying to route out, but can't for some reason, because I, it's just too important. And that is this rare candy going this way. It takes 10 seconds, but oh boy, does it save. Oh boy, does it still like still save a lot of time, especially with my experience route, but we'll get to that later. After we grab that rare candy, we're then going to be heading all the way back to the area three watchtower that we grabbed earlier and go towards the, the grass gym as our next gym. Before we head to the grass gym though, we are going to make a bit of a detour towards this way, which still is technically in the way, but you know, still arguably a detour. We're going to grab this rare candy right here, and then we're going to jump all the way across to the other side to grab this rare candy right over here. You can make this jump without a high jump. It's just really difficult to do so. And it's essentially the reset point of all my victory road runs that isn't a scrap, that isn't a tangled feet bird. Anyway, thanks to high jump, we can also make this jump, which is slightly faster. We're going to jump down here, and then we're going to grab zip a ca an item that many people don't know is this experience candy small. Trust me, this candy matters a lot later. We'll get to why it matters. It does everything I say, every item I grab, it matters. It just doesn't matter now. But it's for a very tight experience reason. So we're gonna go back onto Coridon. We're also gonna see me get off Coridon before certain cutscene triggers. Because the game forces us to dismount in certain locations. And it's just faster for me to dismount instead of the game to dismount. So we're gonna be seeing that. You're gonna see me me doing that a lot. Anyway, Namona likes to talk about us about the gym, but it's like, oh, I want to fight you, but now nah, I'm going to fight you later. And gives us ethers, which are completely useless in this game because the amount of free heals the game gives us. So now we have the gimmick of the grass gym, which is uh, from Where's Waldo to uh, Hide and Seek. Except I don't think some floors really know how to play Hide and Seek very well because they're not really good at hiding. Especially the first three, they are very not good at hiding. At all. But they're like, but did you, if you didn't know, there are roughly 20 Sunflowers that you can pick from, and you only need to get 10 of them. And so, we're just going to be getting the fastest 10. And if you're wondering what the fastest 10 are, if you ever want to replay this game, uh... Here they are, I guess. So, the first three Sunflowers, they are terrible at playing hide and seek because they're literally right in front of you. The one, two, and three. And then the next three, the next two we're gonna pick up are actually right next to this little body of water. So, there's a Sunflower that's literally standing right there. And then there's a Sunflower right here, which you can pick up through the wall, because of course you can. Then we want to go ahead and grab this Sunflora. We then want to skip this Sunflora here because this one throws hands and we don't want to throw hands with a Sunflora. So we're going to grab this Sunflora. We're going to grab this Sunflora next to the vending machine. Be careful, you can talk to the vending machine and lose time that way. We're then going to go grab that Sunflora. We're going to go grab the Sunflora behind this very thin wall. And then that's it. That's all 10 Sunfloras. There are some Sunfloras that do fight you, but you do not have to fight them if you don't talk to them. And there we go, we have 10 Sunfloras. Now I talk to those 10 Sunfloras, we're then going to go 
jump up here and then go into the grass gym. But many people would go around, but you can just, you know, jump. Not that slow to jump. We're going to talk to the gym staffer, and this is going to be the gym that shows us why we have double kick. So for those who are double kick enjoyers, and I know anyone who runs Let's Go Pikachu, they're definitely double kick enjoyers. We use double kick exactly and hopefully only twice. Tangled Feet might have to use it a bit more as it's sometimes it's the uh, strongest uh, fighting type move. But... Or just strongest move in general, but in Scrappy, you only ever have to click double kick twice. And the first one is against the gym leader, Brass against Brassius, because his ace Pokemon is is a Sudowoodo who has the ability Sturdy. And that Pokemon will always live one hit, but thankfully, Double Kick is a move that hits twice. So one of the main reasons why we delay... Because we used to actually do this gym earlier than normal. Like, after Clock, we used to do this gym, but the reason why it's now been... We delay this gym is so that we can actually one-hit KO of a Sudowoodo. We can KO of a Sudowoodo in one turn, which is very important. We're also going to see me using low kick instead of wing attack because it's uh, slightly fast. Because not only is it fast animation wise, we also avoid super effective text, which does slow down a little bit. Unfortunately, we cannot avoid super effective text on the Smoliv because Smoliv is a normal grass type, so no matter what move we click, it will always be super effective. <laughs> but yeah, then here comes the Flamingo for double kick. And yeah, the reason why we use Double Kick is just sturdy. We don't want to kick. We don't want, we want, if we don't KO Vasuda Wudo, it will use Trailblaze. And if it uses, and if gym leaders use, or just any trainer uses a move of their Terra type, they will have a long piece of dialogue that we have to sit through. And we do not want to sit through that. So we're just going to use Double Kick instead. There are a few trainers that won't, but this is a trainer that will. Because it will use Trailblaze because it knows that we're slower. Also, being lower level means that we will not have to deal with accidentally procking Sturdy. Accidentally procking Sturdy, which is a nice thing. Yep, yeah, that is, uh, Brassius. We have now done two Titan badges and two Gym badges. We are some way through. I cannot do math. We are four out of 18. If someone wants to do a percentage of that, go ahead and be my guest. I do not know what that is as a percentage. We've now officially accomplished uh, two gym ba two gym ba uh, two oh my god, why am I repeating myself? I'm repeating myself a lot, but regardless. We've done two, we've done two gym, we've got four, now it's time for us to do the next gym badge. Now, to be thing- now, the thing we have to be careful about the next gym badge is wherever the next gym we enter, Nimona's gonna challenge us. She does this at gym two, as gym three, as well as gym seven. She also challenges us at gym five, but that one's a special case, which we'll get to later so we are gonna have to be careful when we ne enter our next gym but look we have a plan for that we're gonna be sending out our secret weapon against nimona she won't she won't she won't see it coming before that we're gonna head into the ice gym and we're gonna continue the route that tangled feet the tank the candies that tangled feet would get also but before we do that, we need to go into our boxes and showcase our secret weapon, Lechonk. This level 4 Lechonk is going to scare the daylights out of Nimona. But before we do that, we're going to head around this, skip through all that. And we're going to head into the Ghost Gym Town. A fly point that we're going to be using twice throughout this entire run. And... We're also going to do something that many people don't do, and that's actually we're going to go into the Ghost Gym right away. 
we have to go in here anyway. May as well get, may as well activate the gym trial. But also, it's fast. But also, as we'll explain really quickly, it is actually faster. So the reason why I actually enter in the ghost gym, normally you see people enter in the normal gym. But I've actually timed it. The low time for Nimona, both fighting her and also exiting her fight is actually 10 seconds faster fighting her here than it is actually fighting in the normal gym. So that's actually why we I choose to fight Nimona 3 here if I have Scrappy. If I have Tangled Feet, it is actually you still have to fight her in the normal gym because uh, coming here and then going to, to normal is a bit slow. But time save is not worth it. So here we get out Rock Ruff. If I know my luck, this fight will not go well. What do I mean? Well, actually, what do I mean? Like Chung is gonna take take it down. You know what? My luck just ceases to amaze me. This is the first time I've seen this Rock Ruff go for double team in a long while. But yeah, the main thing is that you're supposed to lose the fight because it's faster. It's just very rare that you see it use a status move, but it does have two. And unfortunately, I did see one today. Fun. Let's add that to my sum of worst. Because I've never seen that happen in this category until today. I've seen it happen in any percent, though. Where Rock Throw can miss, by the way. So, you know... Again, you just want to lose as fast as possible, and Nimona can sometimes troll you, which is not, which is not, which is not new. Anyway, we're gonna to talk to the gym leader and say, "Hey, uh, we want to do, we want to just set up the gym test right now, but we're not actually gonna do this gym test right now because uh, we're not ready." Same thing with the ice one. We're also just not ready to do that yet, so we'll come back for this gym test later. How much later? Well, you're gonna have to wait and see. <laughs> so here I'm going to menu, so I put back the Flamigo in the party, just in case I run into something. I did not mean to dismount, but that's fine. And we're gonna continue our candy hunt normally. So these are the candies that you would pick up if you were running Tangled Feet before you head to Orc. Uh, the Again, the reason why and, uh, Scrappy doesn't need to pick up is because we don't have to deal with uh, Intimidate, but Tangle Feet does and such. You do need to pick up these candies beforehand. So we want to pick up the candy right here, and then you want to pick up essentially the best pickup of candies in the entire game, which is right where that tree is. And that tree has three EXP L's, which is the best pickup in the entire game, just by how far away it is. If you are running Tangled Feet, you'd actually go continue down a little bit further to pick up an extra L, and you would skip the Sunny Day L, because that L is actually three seconds slower. Okay, we're then going to grab a few more candies. Now the two roots have combined into one. So now we're both now essentially back to the same. The only difference is... If you are Tangled Feet, you will be using different attacks compared to if you are using a Scrappy Flamingo. Slightly different. So here, we're then now going to fall. We're going to grab that medium candies over there. We're going to kind of do this awkward little jump over here. We're then going to fall slide down to avoid superhero landings. And we're going to grab this Pokemon Center. This center might seem unassuming, but it is the fly point for two objectives later on. So we're going to grab that, and we are going to go up here, and then we're going to jump, do a jump right about there to land right about here so that we can avoid the landing as well. And we'll be heading over towards the normal gym town. Before we head over to the normal gym town, we are going to do grab one more rare candy on our way. And it's actually the treasure hunt and any percent exclusive rare candy, which is this one right here. No other category picks up that rare candy. As we head over, take the normal stroll to 
um, Medali, avoiding all the dealings and all the other Pokemon that are in our way. Uh, after this, after we go into the normal gym and come back out, we are going to be doing a... Hello. We're going to be doing a very, a very specific candy menu. So... We're going to go here, we're going to drop off, we're going to go into the normal gym. Say hello to the... The, uh, the, uh, gym staffer? Gym staff mem- gym staff person? And get the quiz being the fact that we have to figure out what the secret ingredients are. We already know what they are. Because we're speedrunners. And also, you can just do a quick Google search and the game will tell you. I wonder, who actually did this puzzle normally? When they first played it, because I did. It was a pretty good puzzle when you do it normally. Too bad we're speedrunners and so we don't get to do it normally. Here, we're going to go into our bag, we're going to go into our candy, we're going to use all our mediums. All our larges. And we're going to use specifically 8 rare candies to get to 65. For an experience reason, there, there is a reason why we only use 8. We don't want to use all of them because, uh, uh, how it messes up with experience later. But before we get to that, we want to go and talk to this person to do the gym test. So we want to answer the questions of one, two, three, two. Yeah, casually level 65 not an hour into the run. I know, crazy. And believe me, it's only gonna get higher from here. And that is the uh, gym test. That is the gym test. There is actually a reason why we give our experience the way we do. But, uh... It's for very, very specific EXP reasons. Which, it might be a little easier to explain when we get to that point. But, note, every experience that we get here all the way into our next candy menu matters. For my experience calculation. But anyway, here comes the uh, easiest, well, here comes like the longest gym leader for reason, for one reason, and that is the fact that he, they love to do, actually no, this is not the longest gym leader, the second longest gym leader, but okay, well why is this for a really dumb reason? Uh, the main reason to actually be 65, regardless of your ability, is actually the fact that you can wing attack the, the, the Kamala without any issues, which is nice. Slightly faster animation. The rest used to have the acrobatics, which is uh, not much of an issue either, but you know. If we can use the faster move animation, why not use the faster move animation? Here we're going to use acrobatics. It is slightly faster than super effective low kick to use, but... That is, so that's why we use acrobatics. And then of course there's the Star Raptor. If you are scrappy, if you're scrappy, which we are, we can just acrobatics no problem. If you are tangled feet, depending on your attack stat and nature, you may have to double kick this thing instead, which is a very slow animation move, but we don't have to double kick. Uh, the reason why we can't low kick is because low kick against most birds and ghosts are 20 base power. So the main thing to know is that if it looks heavy, it is heavy. If it's a bird, it's not heavy. If it's a ghost, it's not heavy. There's one exception to a Pokemon that look, that looks like it should be heavy, but it's not. And that's Greedent. It looks like it should be heavy, but it's actually only base 20 power. It's actually very light. Oh yeah, by the way, yeah, we just have to sit through this cutscene because of course we do. Because apparently the crowd needs to come from somewhere. Which is, you know, fun. Alright, there goes acrobatics. The most boss move. I should probably, yeah, I think I've already explained acrobatics, but if I haven't, it is a 110 base power move, as long as you don't have a health item. And we get to spam that freely. 
which is ridiculous. And anyway, that is Larry down. That is five badges and a gold split. Nice. So now Larry gives us the a TM which we Oh yeah, no, I'm doing safe strats. So we will not be selling. In fact, one of the things that we will act which we're not I mean we get TMs to sell, but unironically, we're actually not gonna sell anything, and uh, I'll talk more about that later. But anyway, here's the uh champion of the region. Apparently seeing our talent, seeing the fact that we got three gym badges being like, oh cool, nice. But it's like she, the champion fight is like, it's gonna be like, really easy. <laughs> it's like, wow, champion build up, it's gonna be like, six turns, we win. <laughs> okay, as we, now we're gonna head to the next town. So we've just done the normal town, and now we're gonna head to the next laggiest town in the game. I mean, called Kaskarafa, which is... A very much luggy town because it's right next to water. This game and oh hi Cypher. This game does not like water. A lot. Especially when we go to Casaroria Lake, you're gonna be seeing me do a camera manip just to make sure that we don't see a thing. Anyway, here's a cool little movement. You can actually walk left to right and jump up so that we can get ourselves up there without needing to backwards wall jump. Backwards ledge jump, which is nice. We're then gonna go grab that red candy over there. We're then going to go to this wall back and start jumping backwards all the way up. Shout out to this category that only needs to do two jumps versus Starfall Street and Victory Road that needs to do like five. Thanks to high jump. Then we head into Kaskarafa. Fun little fact, I have seen this game just randomly crash in this town twice. Not by me, by other people, but you know, it's funny. And also, if you look... If you look, if you are able to see clearly, you actually can see Bombardia still flying. That's such a nice, nice touch. For some reason, Bombardia is just rendered wherever you go. No idea why, it just is. It's only unrendered when you finally beat it, but you know. I find it incredibly funny that it's just a Pokemon that's just always rendered. Now... After we get the ability, after we grab and steal an old man's wallet, we're now going to be heading back to school and actually going to be doing some classes because we actually have been skipping a lot of classes doing this adventure. You know, you know, school's important. You know, we have to do that. Uh, just kidding, we're actually not going to be doing any of the classes. We're just going to be heading this way, going towards the other gym leaders instead. We're going to do a jump right here. If we are careful, we can actually avoid the hard landing. Sadly, we did not, but that's okay. And we're going to go and head to... Uh, essentially, the Pokemon League. So this is actually a bit of an optimization found in Victory Road, where we are actually going to be going to the Pokemon League early, primarily just to grab the flight point, and then leaving. Uh, this will save time later on, when it comes to load times. So, we'll explain more about... Essentially, loading in and out of Mezagoza is very slow, and so we're going to grab that flight point just so that we can skip a load zone later. Anyway, we're not going to get the infinite fall glitch, thank you. And we're going to jump across to the other side. Like so. This does actually make going to Cotondo and going to... Yeah, going to the bug gym slower than if we went and did the other way, and it also loses us a minus rare candy, but it does save us time later on, which is very important. Anyway, we're going to be heading towards this way, and we're going to be grabbing a very important item called the Adamant Mint. Uh, mints in this game change your Pokemon's nature. And you might look at my nature and ask myself, why am I still picking this mint up? The answer is, I can only skip this mint if I am Adamant, Naughty, or lonely because they boost attack and decrease a stat that we don't care about unfortunately in all the attack plus natures i got i got brave which means i actually have to um 
I have to still pick up the adamant, unfortunately, because I do actually need my speed. My speed is important. Also, nice bonk by me. Anyway, we go inside the bug gym, and we get talked to essentially two members of the Elite Four. And also, apparently, most people's favorite character design in the game being Rika. But this is just me delaying Todd, being just me being delaying stuff because we're gonna go into one of the most infamous games in um uh, one of the most infamous gym leader puzzles in the entire game. Say hello to Olive Roll. Everyone's favorite mini game, everyone's favorite gym test. And it's definitely a mini game that has absolutely no problems whatsoever. None. It has no problems. I do not know what you are talking about. If someone subscribed from TPAT's here, they have a fantastic email of Olive Roll that essentially explains the experience. Well, we're gonna go, we're gonna talk to this gym, and we're gonna do what I like to call the physics engine being weird. Essentially, this thing has physics. What kind of physics engine? I don't know, but if there's a game I want, if there's a new game I want Pokemon po Game Freak to develop, I want the Olive Roll physics in it. I want a full game where it's just the Olive Roll physics. Anyway, our goal is to get this Olive Roll to the goal. And the thing is, it can go backwards for no reason whatsoever, and it can also just clip through the floor if it really wants to. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump this way, we're going to get the olive roll, that's a nice olive roll jump right there, that's a second nice olive roll jump right there. The third one, not quite. Almost got it, so we're going to do a jump one more time, we're then going to get the olive roll just to go through here, through the red gate, try and get into the thing, and that's just it, that's it. That actually wasn't a bad olive roll. Believe me, this olive roll can go way worse. It's actually such a good olive roll that I got it by five so seconds. It was such a good. Oh, oh that's unfortunate. It was such a good olive roll that uh, the foot olive roll is so problematic that it definitely it crashed PSR's TV stream. That's how broken olive roll is. But anyway, we've done that mini game. We're now gonna head. We're not gonna do the bug gym, which is a surprising fact. Then we're gonna actually head up here, go to this wall, do some backwards jumps, and then continue going through. All right. Then, oh, oh, hi, Nimble. That was close. We're then going to go through here, go through the game. And then jump. And then jump. And then jump. I will tell you if the game is just lagging or if the, or if it's just a PSR stream being funky. Because right now the game is not uh, lagging right now. All right, so we're going to continue going through. Climb up to Bombardier. And then avoid... Oh, that might be close for Ghastly. Oh, okay, that's a lag spike. But as we go ahead and continue going up towards Bombardia. Uh, main thing to worry about Bombardia is you can get hit. You can get hit by these uh, boulders, and if you get hit by a boulder, it's uh, you get dwined. And we don't want to get dwined, so we're not gonna get dwined. But even then, and then uh, yeah, that's it. That then that's how you get to the bird titan without getting hit by a rock. If you get hit by a rock, it is a bit of time loss, but essentially. This Titan is so easy, all you have to do is wing attack twice and you are fine. 
because this Titan is only level 20. Only four levels higher than the one you're supposed to do. It's kind of weird how they want you to do this Titan second and off one third, even though it's not convenient to do it that way. Apparently they want you the ability to swim before you have the ability to high jump, which is fine, I guess. But also, Bombardier gets the short end of this stick. This Herba Mystica is not good. Because this Bombardier only gets a 20% boost to its HP. All the other Titans get at least 50. And this one only gets 20. So, they really did not like this bird when they made it a Titan. Yeah, that is, uh... Bombardia. We now have the third of five Titan badges. And also six badges overall. Only 12 more to go. We're pretty making good progress on the two on the two main storylines of the game. What's that? Wait, what do you mean there's a third storyline? No, it's going to this, there's only two right now. I don't know what that third storyline is. There's definitely not a third storyline in this game that we're definitely not just avoiding because it's fast to do it later. One thing you might actually find interesting is despite the fact that I have the Adamant Mint, most of the time you will use the Adamant Mint uh, immediately afterwards, but I actually am delaying that menu as well. I'm essentially combining two menus later to uh, equip the Adamant Mint. Also, we have Brave, so we kind of have plus attack anyway, so we don't need Adamant until a little later. PP is never an issue with this speedrun. And the reason is that after every objective, you get fully healed. So, after every path of legend, after every legend, after every titan you fight, before every gym you fight, and before every starfall base you fight, you will always get free healed to full. So PP is never an issue. Even in the Elite Four, when you don't get healed, it's still not an issue. It's why Ethers and Elixirs are the most useless item ever. At least in this game. They're not useless, they're just useless in this game. The worst that ever happens with PP, I think, is that one of our moves gets down to one, but that's it. The amount of free heals the game gives us means, and also the lack of trainers we actually need to fight, means PP is never an issue in this game. In this game, So PP management is not a requirement at all. Which is great. So, by beating the Flying Titan, we get the ability to swim. Please do not ask why that is the case, it just is. Because the next Titan is the Ground Titan, which gives us the ability to glide. Do not, again, do not ask why they made that decision, but they did. Anyway, we're going to make a very tight jump. This jump could hopefully get us to the other side to slide. Unfortunately, we barely missed it, so we got the slow slide, which is fine. And one thing to know about this place is that for some reason, it is very easy to get the hard landing. So trying to avoid hard landings is actually kind of difficult, but I was able to avoid most of them. Anyway, 
these next two titans are very close by to each other, but their level differences are drastic in comparison. The titan that we just fought, the game doesn't tell you this, but the, the titan that we just fought was level 20. And this one is level 45. But you know, that's a bit of a jump. But a jump that we have to deal with. But anyway, here comes uh, the next Titan. Uh, this one is Great Tusk, and it's actually a great time to talk about the version differences of this game. Uh, if you play on Violet, you will not be fighting Great Tusk, you will be fighting Iron Treads instead, which is actually a better fight because you get to use Low Kick, which is a faster move animation, and it will always kick, and it always just does more damage because it has less defense. Why are we running Scarlet? It's because Violet lags more. That is the main reason why speedrunners pick Scarlet over Violet, because it lags more, despite the fact that this fight is actually better in Violet than in Scarlet. Another thing that you might find a little bit weird is the fact that I am not level 73 compared to other routes that also do this. This is because at, even at 73, you will never one hit KO the Great Tusk Titan in one hit. So I'm like, What's the point of going all the way high level if you're never going to one-shot it? So, I don't. Instead, thanks to my research in Glitched, we're two-shotting this. We'll always be two-shotting this, and I know for a fact that in 65, regardless of your stats, you will always two-shot the Great Tusk Titan. So a little bit of an optimization there. Unironically, it would actually be slightly faster if Scovillain died there, but Scovillain can only die if it crits. You don't really have full control of what Great Tusk can do, which is a bit of a shame, but you know, it's fine. Great Tusk can either knock off or... Great Tusk can have other moves. Rapid Spin is technically its worst move to use because it boosting its speed. Boosting any status move status is just slow. So we don't want to see that. Um, what else? Uh, knockoff is actually its best move because it's actually the fastest animation and Stomping Tantrum is okay. I think it only has those three moves. I don't think it has a fourth one. Should probably talk a little bit about the Titan Pokemon and its AI. The simple thing is that Titan and Pokemon AI are just random AI. It's wild Pokemon AI, essentially. Because they are wild Pokemon, if you think about it. This means they have either three to or three or four moves that they will use randomly. It's not really gonna be a problem with that's not really a problem with Great Tusk. In fact, you're more likely to lose time if there's a sandstorm. than whatever move Great Tusk decides to use. But you, but there will be a problem in the next Titan that we're gonna fight. And so now we finally have the fourth Titan badge and we're actually gonna be doing the fifth Titan badge very, very, very soon. And, we're actually, and it's actually one of the things in this run. We just do all the Titans as fast as possible because the Titans give us our movement abilities. Some more useful than others. Like, Glide is kind of useful, but not in this category. If you do Glitched, however, it's a fantastic ability. Glide is, like, helpful here and there. But not really the fastest ability. The ability to swim, also only used once throughout the entire game and never again. But the ability locked behind the ability to swim, the ability that Dondoza gives us is actually uh, wall climbing, which actually does save a significant amount of time when going to uh, the, the water gym and the psychic gym. So we do actually want to beat Dondozo as soon as possible in this category.
glitched has a, a different way of doing things. Which is, you know, fun. If you ever seen a glitched run, it's great. So here I'm now going to be heading towards Porto Marinada. Uh, the train is a pretty good guide on where you want to be because you want to jump off. I did say that glide was kind of useless, but it's actually useful to get this uh, EXP candy L that I do need. You can technically get up here without glide and without high jump, but it's way harder and only done in one category called Victory Road, which we don't have to do. Anyway, uh, remember the wallet that we stole from ages ago? Uh, yeah, now it's time for us to give back the wallet. But before that, this train of things is like, oh, you're, you're in our way. We don't want to go get the wallet. So instead, we're just going to take the wallet from him. But there's no, instead, we want to give back the wallet. But this train is like, oh, would you, oh, you want to mess with, with the loser? With, like, the Kofu? No. So here, we're going to wing attack twice. I'm going to wing attack twice, and there's going to be absolutely no time losses or anything that's going to happen in these two Pokemon that we're going to face, right? Apparently so. So, fun little fact. Uh, these two Pokemon have Aqua Jet, and if they use Aqua Jet, we just lose four seconds because they use Aqua Jet. And to my surprise today, uh, they didn't use Aqua Jet. So that's, you know, PSR Marathon luck going right for once. Still surprises me, and I know I have like so much time loss left, it's like so much of the run left. But uh, my sum of best, my best possible time is still saying sub 350, which has never happened in a treasure hunt run. So if I continue this pace, we could see a world record here. <laughs> uh, but again. Don't pull your hype hype up too much because there's plenty of things that can go wrong. And the fact that I am going to have to waste time going for a safety strip because I have to actually finish the run. So here we're going to go and do some bidding. It is actually faster to do don't bid and then bid 35,000. So 35,000 is the minimum amount of money that you need to bid to win the bid. You can never actually lose this bid no matter how hard you try. But by bidding the minimum, uh, you keep all the money that uh, Kofu gives you, which you know, fun. So now I've already done that, before we actually head back to the water gym, we're going to head back to Glassy Island Mountain. Remember that? Pokemon Center that we grab that's just in the mountain? Yeah, that's where we're flying. So now we're going to go into our bag, and we're going to do the menu where we're going to give the Elf candy first, which gets us to exactly 66, and then we're going to give all the rare candies to then get to 73, and then we're going to give the S right now. Uh, that is important because... Uh, okay, that was weird. So... I gave a very, very specific amount of experience. So remember when I said I only need, want to get to 65? The reason why I only got to 65 is because after you do every fight to that point, then give an L, you will then get to 66. And then... You will then get to 66 with that L, and then you use all your rare candies to then get to 73. So right now we are 73. We've also used the Adamant Mint as well. So we don't have... So we will now have Adamant for the rest of the game. Again, you can skip the Adamant Mint if you are plus attack, just not minus speed. So 
now we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and fight Dondozo. Dondozo can be scary, especially the fact that now it is raining, so all of Dondozo's water type attacks is uh, gonna do some damage. Especially Water Pulse, where I hopefully I don't get it. Good, I don't get confused, which is nice. So, first Titan can be a bit trolly if you get Water Pulse or. Uh, if you get either Water Pulse or Body Slammed, because if you get confused or Paralysis, then it can be a bit of a trolly mess, but. Aside from that, that is uh, not too much of an issue. Oh, hi. Was not expecting you to just spawn right in front of me. That's uh, two encounters now. Hi, Bug Mike. Oh, boy, that's like. And then, yeah, rain here is also not great because the uh, performance is uh, not great, especially for the water. Oh, my God, that's so much lag. Holy moly. But uh, yeah, for those who did not see it because if the video feed was down, what I did before I entered in the Dondozo fight was I did a menu where I gave a large candy, which gave exactly enough experience to get to 66. Then I used all my remaining rare candies to get to 73. And then after I used the rare candies, I then gave the experience candy small that we picked up earlier and I gave it. So my Flamingo has 800 extra experience for that candy small. Again, for experience reasons for experience reasons later, it's going to be very important. For right now, we're going to be doing low kick twice. And hopefully, Greedent actually becomes a very good support player here. So, we're going to use, we're going to use low kick. It does use tail up, which is very good. Now, we're hoping for Greedent to use take down the next turn. Hopefully. Yeah, so so that so the good fight is as long as he uses takedown, we are good because we are almost dead. Nice. And that is uh Dondozo phase two down. Now, if you played this game, you know that there's actually a phase three to this fight, being Tatsugiri, but thankfully, between the phases, you get free healed. Which is nice. So despite the fact that I am like at red HP with like nothing, we don't have to deal with that. Next up is then the Tatsugiri, which similar to Dondozo, we're just going to acrobatics. And as long as Flamigo does something of use, it should be dead in two turns. Nice double crit on Flamigo, by the way. Just saying. Then we're going to Acrobatics one final time. Thanks to that Tail Whip. And then goes takes down. And that is Tetsugiri done. This fight can be definitely very RNG heavy. So the fact that we have uh, this fight not be too bad RNG wise is pretty good. We did lose some time because of the... We did lose some time because of the, what you call it, uh, encounter. But aside from that, that wasn't a bad Tatsugiri fight at all. Actually, the Tatsugiri fight was close to perfect. Yes, we do Flamigo sweep the entire game. However, we do have some support Pokemon that does help us. More on that when we get to Katie. There is one fight that we don't use Flamigo for because we need to, um, because reasons. Oh no, that cat, uh, no, we do not, no, I will tell you right now, uh, we will not use a Scavillan. Because that Pokemon is 
horrific to catch. In a speedrun setting. I uh, just need to double check something. And yeah, this is the final Titan that we do. We are now done with all the Titan storylines, all the Titans in the entire game. And this actually means that we can go right now fight Arvin to do so, but we will not be doing that as uh, we are not ready for that fight. Also, it's just faster to do all the endgame stuff in one go instead of like do the end game of Arvin right now because Arvin doesn't give us anything if we do it now. So we will not be doing uh, the Arvin storyline. Uh, well, we will not be finishing the Arvin, the Path of Legend storyline quite yet. We do have to finish it because the category does save does say we have to finish all storylines. So we will have to fight Arvin, but uh, we won't be fighting him for a while. And I do mean a while. Also, I realize I did not switch my split orders, so I'm going to have to do a completely different endgame than what I normally do. Because I have changed some things in Treasure Hunt. As of three days ago, so... Fun. Main time to beat for this run is just underestimate, so just don't be above four hours, otherwise uh, PSR TV might be bad at me. Which is technically only nine minutes off my personal best, which is technically a... Like, you should probably do like 20 or extra minutes but my i have full confidence in this category that this ca this game is so consistent that honestly i can i'm i'm like 10 minutes something really bad has to happen if i have to if i have to uh uh te 10 minutes like something colossally bad has to have happened anyway now with the ability to wall climb uh, we can now go into the water gym, which is way faster than taking the lift. So remember, kids, uh, you want to beat the lift, uh, climb the wall. If you're wondering how much time it saves, it saves 10 seconds climbing the wall instead of um, not climbing the wall. So anyway, now we go into another gym where we just uh, spam A and win the game. not get banned it's just that being being behind estimate is not great this is a, in a marathon setting you never want to be overestimate than under however with this pace as the run goes it's we're gonna smash that we're gonna smash that estimate anyway here's uh the fourth gym leader kofu the water type X specialist. But again, may I remind people, we now have a level 73 Flamigo going to fight against a level 30 team. So to say that I have the uh, uphill advantage is uh, not. Is uh, a. <laughs> not. Is like, uh, you know, we're just saying much. Yes, we're casually level 73 an hour and 20 into the run. And again, we only get higher from here. We are already higher level than the highest level Pokemon we will ever face in this game, which is level 66.
So this fight can just be a time to uh, mash A and don't get Sandstorm, which we did not get, which is fantastic. If a Sandstorm does spawn, because of move animations turned on, we will lose a turn of tip. We will lose a turn of tip damage every single turn. Since there's two turns we'll take chip damage, we will lose five seconds per turn, therefore we lose ten. Thankfully, no Sandstorm. However, it would be funny if a Sandstorm Storm would happen. This is actually not the worst place weather, if a weather happens, it can lose a significant amount of time. There are other places that, uh, that could be way worse. But yeah, and, um, uh, it's like, Kofu gonna terrestrialize. I mean, it's funny. I always make this joke. The ice type's biggest buff in this game is not being an ice type. And it's so true, because now it's a water type. But that doesn't matter. Wing attack still gets the knockout. And we have taken ourselves another gym badge, going for our total being nine gym badges. We are now halfway done our badge collection. As we move on, we get ourselves another selfie, because of course we do. And Pokemon above... Oh yeah, I should probably say something about obedience, so... You might be thinking, why not do we just catch something that's like level 75 and just use it? The answer is, due to how obedience works in this game, we cannot catch a Pokemon that's higher than our obedience level, because they will not obey you. However, if you catch a Pokemon that's lower than your obedience level, but then level up, you'll still... They will still obey you. So this Flamigo is still obeying me because I initially caught it at level 17, where my level cap was level 20. Despite the fact that it's now level 73 and my level cap is 40, it only checks for level caught, not current level. Which is nice. So that's why this Flamigo is still obeying me. As we head down into Cartondo for the 5th gym, where I think our Flamigo deserves a break. You know, he's been putting up... Is it he or is it she, actually? I did not check the gender. Uh, she's been putting up a lot of work, and it's time for her to take a break. Crocolor, it's time for you to go. Believe me, there's actually a reason why we're using Crocolor, trust me. So I'm not I'm not using Crocolor because, you know, it's cool and all, but there is actually a legitimate reason as to why we are using uh Crocolor for the bug gym. Also, I'm just gonna say this right now. Nimona has a GPS track installed on our phone. How is she able to go out of the water gym and find us here in the bug gym? In about five seconds flat. Don't quite get that. Don't quite understand that, but she definitely has a tracking device on her phone. That tracks us. That tracks our location. Anyway, here comes the bug gym. Please don't rain. Because if it rains, uh, we're gonna have problem we're gonna have a few problems because we are using a fire type in the bug gym. And if it rains, it means all of our fire type attacks do 50% less damage, which is, uh, not great. But yep, yeah, here's, um, uh, Katie. As we will be doing the bug gym with our Crocolor. Now, you might be asking, why did we deposit Croc- Well, for we might be asking a couple of questions. One, why did we deposit Crocodile? Why did we deposit Flamingo for Crocodile? 
Two, why did we teach Incinerate? Way earlier. And three... I actually forgot what the third question was. But to answer the second question first... The main reason... The second question first is... Uh... We can actually nimble... Use Ember to... Just, uh... KO all the Pokemon, with the exception of one. So... Depending on your... Boy, Coco stats. If you are minus special attack, you would have to use Incinerate on the Tarantula. But you can skip using Incinerate on Tarantula if your special attack is not minus special attack. Uh, your special attack IV itself does not matter. But the re main reason why we still have to teach Incinerate regardless is because we need to KO this Teddy Ursa in one hit. And so we will do that. But I still haven't answered the question, why did we switch? Doesn't Wouldn't Flamigo just wing attack everything and KO everything? The answer is yes. It would do the same thing. But except you have to think about this in the bigger picture. And like, what's the bigger picture? And that is actually not... The reason why I picked Crocolo to do the bug gym is not because of the fight, but because of the fight the fight. Remember how I said Nimona 4 is special? Nimona 4 is special because in the fifth gym, she doesn't challenge you before the gym, she challenges you after the gym. And the reason why, and b between that, you cannot change your party member. And if you remember last time in the Ghost Gym, we want to lose because losing is faster. So because of this, we will pick a Pokemon that can defeat a Gym Leader and then immediately lose afterwards. And Crocolor is the perfect Pokemon for this, for this journey. And the main reason why we pick... Well, one of two reasons why we pick Foycoco. There is a second. There is a second good enough reason as well. But the primary reason why we pick Fuecoco is we want a Pokemon that will lose immediately to Nemo where that can easily defeat a gym leader and then immediately lose to Nemona. Because the thing about this game's weird level scaling thing is that the gym leader levels will remain the same, meaning KT will always be the first gym and that you should defeat. And actually the first objective that you should do, but we do it as the tenth objective. But Nemona's team scales based on how many gym, lad gym, be gym badges you have instead of how, instead of which gym leader you beat. The idea is that you're supposed to fight this version of Nemona after Larry, who is the fifth gym, because the levels are equivalent. But because we fight Katie as our fifth gym, it means that our Pokemon level, it means that we will have, the Katie's gym is so low level, but Nimona is so high that we can have a Pokemon that fits in the middle where it can one hit KO all of Katie's Pokemon while simultaneously losing the, losing the fight afterwards. And that is why we pick Crocolor. This won't be Crocolor's last time to shine, by the way, but it will, but this is for Crocolor's main usefulness in the speed run. Now here we're gonna say, hi Lycanroc, please one hit KO me with Excel Rock, goodbye, and that yeah, that's the Nimona that's the Nimona 4 fight. Thankfully Excel Rock is Thankfully Excel Rock is a priority move that just always KOs. Thankfully. Now it's time for the gym leaders of all time. You thought Olive Roll was a fantastic minigame. Wait till you see the next one.
So now that we've done that, we now leave the gym, remind myself that I must put back Flamigo into my box, otherwise we will have problems. Whereas we we'll have problems later. And now it's time for us to head to the Psychic Gym by accidentally bonking on that palm tree. My favorite. So now we're going to head towards the Psychic Gym, but on our way to the Psychic Gym, we're going to be grabbing a couple of items. If you can guess what the items are, you get yourself a cookie. Three, two, one. It's a red candy. Yep, we still collect. Despite the fact that we are 73, we are still collecting rare candies and experienced candies. We're not quite done with that yet. So there's another rare candy, and then once the uh, tagline changes to West Province Area 1, we then start climbing up the wall, like so. And the main reason why we love wall climb is because it saves so much time uh, getting to Psychic Gym. If we did not have wall climb... Uh, game, please. Game. Game. Please. Get up there! Thank you! If we did not have the ability to wall climb, uh, getting to Psychic Gym would be incredibly slower. Uh, just watch Victory Road and you'll see how they get to Psychic Gym. Here we're going to jump and before we land we will glide so that we don't get the hard landing. And welcome to Alfonada, a town that, fun little fact, if you don't, this is the only town in the entire game where if you do not grab the, uh, the center, you cannot fly back here. It's the only town in the game where you have to touch the center. No other town does this. Thankfully, we never have to come back here, so we don't have to touch the center, but this is something to note if you are running post-game, which you should never do. Now we're going to go and do one of the gym tests of all time. Uh, who wants to do some exercise? That's essentially what we're doing. So, and here's the thing, because we're speedrunners, we're going to cheat even on exercises. You might be wondering, how do we cheat on exercises? Well. This is meant to just be a riv well, somewhat of a rhythm game where you're supposed to like match the emotions, except Game Freak really wanted to make sure that you're able to do it, so there's just we only have to do the minimum amount. Which for the first one is twice. So one and two. And now we can just uh, sit back and relax as the game does itself. Don't mind me, I'm just playing the video game. By not, by not playing the video game. By me. Wow, that raid came in the perfect time of me doing absolutely nothing. Really, you want me to do the face faces first? You really want you really want to see that? Don't think we want to see that. I don't think we want to see that. Uh, anyway, fun little fact about uh, uh, this gym is the fact that uh, all these Pokemon that we are fighting in this gym specifically have random natures, so they can have plus defense if they really want to. Also, nice trace time loss. 
Love to see that. Love to see that. Now we've finally got... Yeah, we're going to face a trainer. And now we have to do the Psychic Emotional Test again. Except this time we have to do it five times. But yeah, we don't have to do the faces anymore because it actually does waste time. Every time we do a face, it actually stops down the uh, counter. Unless you do the wrong face, in which case it actually doesn't do anything. So, three. Four. And five. If you do the right face, it will slow down the thing. But if you do the wrong face, like so, you will not lose time. Oh my, oh me, we don't want to do that. We don't want to see that. We really don't. I mean, I could, but I don't have a space to technically do that. Anyway, that's the, the second one done. I mean, I guess I have the personality. <laughs> Anyway, here comes like three more trainers that we have to fight. And um, yeah, they're not very exciting to see because again, we just uh, wing attack three times and it's over. So there goes one. Here comes Indeedee. Here comes another wing attack and it's over. If we do this in Victory Road, you are lower level and you have to sometimes use acrobatics. And sometimes you have to risk the plus random plus defense nature, which is a, which is a 4 and 25. But thankfully with 73, we don't have to deal with that. That is... Flamigo. Yes, it... Because I have acrobatics, we will never be holding an item, ever. Because we don't need items. Also, buying items is slow. Despite the fact we have access to all the items in the video game, we don't buy any of them because it's not fast enough. <laughs> because also, acrobatics is just so stupid of a move. So now we've done our ESP exercise. Now fight the Psychic Gym Leader. Now granted you might be thinking, wait a second, isn't sending a fighting type against a Psychic Gym Leader not a good idea? And the answer is yes, except may I remind you that we are 30 levels higher than the, than the Psychic Gym Leader's ace. So uh, we're fine. There is no issues. But also, psychic types, for those who aren't unfamiliar, a lot of psychic types are not very physically bulky. So we won't be having to deal with that at all. Uh, actually, do you need to check my attack or something? Oh, where's my attack? Uh... Uh, Tulip. The strat here is you can low kick the Perigraph because it's actually faster and it's also part normal. A wing attack will sadly not be enough to knock it out, which is fine. Then we're going to have the Gardevoir who is so physically frail that we can actually still wing attack it. And then Espafra, because of my attack, it is either a 14 and 16 or 15 and 16 range to KO the Espafra with a wing attack. And because we want to see some risks, I'm going for it because there's literally no real big downside of some from time loss, and we get it anyway. Ow. 
At worst, that was an 87.5% chance to KO. At best, it was a 93. It's either an 87.5 or 90. What's the number? 87.5 or it's 90. It's 90 something. Wait, I can do the math. Well, I can't. I can't do math in my head. But essentially, it was very likely that Wing Attack would have KO'd. And this still needs acrobatics because it is very bulky. Because it's not a psychic type; it's a fairy type. This boy actually has bulk. And there goes the psychic gym leader. There goes down our. Sixth gym badge, which means 10th badge overall. Alright, so, 6th gym badge is down, we're now actually going to go straight to the 7th gym badge. So, remember a long time ago. And when we buy a long time ago, I mean about... An hour... The hour 40 minutes ago. We grabbed the ice gym flight point, and talked to the ice gym challenger and said, we're going to do that later. Well, now's the time. Now's the time that we're finally going to tackle the Ice Gym, because we are now ready to go. But there's also a second advantage of doing the Ice Gym now, than doing it, at, than doing it earlier. The reason why we want to do the Ice... Well, first off, boxes. But Chunk, we need the Secret Weapon back again. The, re the main reason why we decided to talk again is because... If we go into the gym, we talk, and then we do what we need to do. This guy will be here. We can then talk to him before we go to the gym, and essentially have... Essentially go into the gym, fight the ice gym immediately. It's just more optimal movement-wise to do it in this way. The second reason... Is... Like I mentioned earlier... Nimona has different load times depending on which gym you choose to fight her. And the Ice Gym conveniently has the fastest loading times for Nimona. So here is uh, Alpine Skiing. The main thing is that we're supposed to hit gates, however, the only thing that matters is we get to the gate before an hour 30. Before a minute 30, which we can skip plenty of gates and still be fine. The main thing is we want to just hold a single direction so we get our max speed and try and avoid turning as much as possible. Fun little fact, everything else is rendered. Like the trainers and the terra crystals, they're all still technically there. They're just invisible so that we can't see them or interact with them. But they're still there. So here we're going to jump off, we're going to go into the gym, and as you may know, Lechonk is in our party because we are going to be saying goodbye to it because Nemona is strategically placed right in the ice gym. Okay, we find Nemona here in the ice gym simply because it is the fastest load time. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Again, we want to lose Nimona because losing Nimona is faster because we don't have to see the terrestrialization animation, which is the most important thing. We do lose money, but the money is uh, insignificant and also we've planned around the fact that we've lost money. 
Here's Lechonk, here's Nimona. We're gonna fight. This Lechonk is definitely going to win. And we lose. Later on, we are going to be buying vitamins. And because my stats aren't as good, we're also going to be buying bottle caps later. But you can technically skip the bottle caps if your Flamigo stats are better. But since my Flamigo stats are very bad, we will not be. We'll be buying some bottle. We'll be buying two bottle caps. I'll explain what they are later, but for right now, we're going to go into our boxes, put the back the Flamingo into the party, and then apparently slide down. That's fine. And it's time for us to... Thing. Yeah, we don't have full control over our stats. Speaking of stats, uh, there's another gamble range I'm going to go for. 7 to 8 is a 14 and 16 range for acrobatics to KO the uh, Altaria. I could go... There is isn't no real big downside for going it, aside from the fact that you will lose a turn. But the alternative strat is I have to use double kick, which is a really slow. Really slow. So yeah. I should actually put that in my notes how many in my notepad how many uh stuff I need to buy because of that. Uh because I can only buy eleven, I need to buy two and six. So two and nine. So, yeah. Oh, this gym is uh, pretty simple. Despite the fact that we are against an Ice-type gym, we will not be using a fighting move at all. Because, uh, again, super effective moves are slightly slower than just the powerful acrobatics. Except for Frost Moth. Uh, unfortunately, using a fighting move is not great. So we just use Wing Attack instead. So here's uh, the next Pokemon, the Bad Tick. And use Acrobatics. You can also see the game kind of like not exactly performing well because uh, after a certain amount of time the game starts to chug a little bit and you can definitely see it in the ice gym uh normally in treasure hunt you don't reset at all i could choose to reset but i will not just to make sure it's accurate with treasure hunt with actual runs of treasure hunt but yeah here only chugs because all the NPCs are kind of in the way of rendering. So anyway, uh, here is a 14 in 16 range that I don't have to go for, but I want to anyway, because I want to go fast. And also using double kick is a very slow animation move anyway. Do we hit the 14-16? We do. Like, what range? Just hit the range. And there goes down the ice gym, the seventh gym. Now... We should probably address the, uh, Starmobile in the room. Where's Starfall Street? This entire time, we have not done a single Starfall Street base. And now this is when the time we start doing Starfall Street bases. So, I explained earlier the catch, uh, requirement, the catch, um, obedience level. And the reason why we want to do seven gym badges, we're going to be catching a secondary Pokemon that we're going to be using for not only the Starfall bases, but also for one gym, which is essentially a double battle gym. So this is the time where we are going to be doing the, what I like to call, the Starfall Cleanup. 
which essentially is just going through all the Starfall bases and uh, clean and essentially cleaning them up. The reason why we wait so long to do any of the Starfall bases is because we want to use two Pokemon that are essentially high level, and the highest level Pokemon that we can catch is actually ne near the fighting base, which is the highest level. Second to highest level objective we have to do, followed by the Dragon Titan. So the Quick Balls that we also picked up earlier is going to be useful because we're going to be catching a Pokemon. There are two Pokemon that we can catch here. Uh, Halucha if one spawns, if not Cypher. Cypher is a worse catch overall. But, oh hi, here's a Lucha. And I got the sad thing, I got a little bit of a turnaround glitch, meaning catching Halucha is gonna be, that, that Halucha was gonna be a pain to catch. So we're gonna have to unfortunately say goodbye to it. So here we go ahead and jump up the wall game, please. Game, can you please wall climb? Thank you. There are still a few more opportunities for Halucha to spawn. If not, we will be going for Cypher, which is a worse catch rate. Thankfully, thanks to autosave, if I catch a Scyther and does not get it... Oh, hi, Lucario. Then it's not the end of the world. So we do want to try and backstrike it just to aid in the catch rate. Uh, You're just going to be stuck there, aren't you? Okay, that's fine. We'll, we we'll, won't we'll catch you. Instead, we'll catch... Uh, you. Oh, you turned around as well. That's so lame. Wait. All right. Come on. All right. Hopefully he gets in because this is a 70% chance to get in. And this is level 51, so that's good. One, two, three, good. Perfect. Uh, any problems with 51 Cypher or no? No problems with 51 Cypher. Any Cypher's run, any 51 Cypher is completely fine to do the fast drag. So now that we caught a Cypher, slash Halucha, you can use Halucha as well. It's going to be used as a secondary. Mainly because we need to use it for a double fight later. And also, it's a good Pokemon for the Starfall bases, which we'll get into momentarily. Right now, we're going to go drop off here to activate the cutscene. And we're going to meet a very, very uh, normal student, by the way. Completely normal, definitely goes into our classes. You know, definitely not an old man in a blazer. There's nothing wrong with this person. No way whatsoever. He definitely is not going to um, lose you 30 seconds later on in, the, in a fight that we definitely do against him. But to explain earlier, you have to catch either a Cypher or a Halucha. The reason why we catch either or is we need it as a... Second, we need it as a second Pokemon slot to be a doubles partner, but also use it. Halucha is easier to catch, but there are less Haluchas that can do a fast strat in the Ghost Gym than there are Cyphers. We'll explain what the fast strat is in Cypher on, on the Ghost Gym is later, but for now, Halucha is the better catch for consistency sake, but Cypher is the better catch for doing a fast strat in one of the fights. If you backstrike Halucha, it's the same catch rate as Flamigo, so you won't have issues. Now, here I need to be very careful because I need to do an experience, an experience very carefully. So here, should have went to back first, but it's fine. So we need to do game, large, two, rare candy, Four, medium, two. And then acrobatics, teach, two, cypher. Over slot one. And then boxes. That did not mean to dismount, but it's fine. And there we go. 
So, similar to before, we have to give experience in a very specific way. With the small that we gave all the way back in Dondozo, with the two extra larges, we get just enough experience, regardless of what we catch, to get to level 75. We then rare candy to 79, and then use the two mediums afterwards to get 6,000 experience. The reason why that's important is, again, we need to hit a specific level at a specific Pokemon, which we'll, which we'll talk about later. But you have to do that candy menu in that order specifically. If you give the mediums first, you have screwed up the candy order. That is one thing to keep in mind. Anyway, uh, you're also going to realize for the most part, we only have one Pokemon in our team. It's only at the very beginning when we choose to have two. You might be thinking, why why not have your a full team of Pokemon getting experience? And the answer to that question can be answered in this very fight right here. Remember the fun little thing known as set mode? Yeah, that doesn't exist in this game. So every time you have a full team of Pokemon, the game will ask you to switch. And uh, that loses four seconds every single time. So we do not want a full party because we do not want to have be asked that every single time. The only fights that we are forced to do so is any fight in a Starfall base. And also the fact that deposit withdrawing and depositing is not faster than just taking the four second time loss in the grunt fights. But any other case, we will be depositing our Pokemon immediate for anything. But after we do all the Starfall bases and the one double gym fight, we will be depositing our Pokemon and only be using Flamingo. We also taught Acrobatics to Cypher. That will be important for, again, the Ghost double later. Now we move on to the actual main gimmick of Starfall Street, these Starfall bases. And they are they do have some uh, some things to no note about it, but the main trick we we're gonna be doing is something known as a stop and go. The main thing is we use the let's go feature to essentially send out our Pokemon. But every time we use a let's go feature normally, it's kind of slow because we have a handout animation. So I'm going to let go of the control stick and then we, oh, I'm going to let go of the control stick, press R, and then press the, the control stick. That way we skip that animation and can continue going. So as you can see, that's the slow animation that we did the hand, the send out the hand. And what I'm doing is skipping that animation by letting, letting go, pressing R, and holding the control stick. We call this a stop and go because you are literally stopping and going. Sometimes it's a bit awkward to try and stop and go, especially if you're trying to go to a specific direction, but as long as you can... I know for a fact you do not fight the Flamingo. Fine. Then... That actually should be it. Yeah. That is it. I do not have to fight anything more, but I will fight you just in case. That's an 845. That's actually not a bad time to finish the uh, Starfall base for fighting base. The thing to know about damage calculation in this game is that the only thing that the game checks for when you're doing a Let's Go fight is the inherent typing of the Pokemon. Everything else, what moves it has, does not matter. So when I send out Flamigo or Cypher, it'll be doing flying damage against all the Pokemon or bug damage against all the Pokemon and using the opponent's flying fighting typing as their defensive type. It's It hasn't really been explained what does what and how much damage a Pokemon can do. We don't really have too much information. We just know that it only uses its primary typing. Teaching Flamigo a dark move does not do anything. It will still use either fighting or flying coverage. And what moves you have also don't matter.
So here we're going to be using, essentially thanks to our massively broken flying typing, we're just going to cheese essentially the entire thing. But essentially, it's kind of cool that we're seeing like the fight, we're fighting a Pokemon on top of a car. I still find that to be very cool about the, about the Star 4 bases. And then we get to actually uh, fight the car. And this is actually going to be the first case of us using X items. So because this is a Gen 9 game, which is a post Gen 7 game, X items have their effect doubled. So we get to use, so when we use an X attack, we'll be doubling our attack, not increasing our attack by two stages, not one, which is nice. Uh, we do use this because the Pokemon that we need to actually uh, KO is very bulky. And we would like to KO it in one hit because it has slow move animations. And also because we're 79, we will never KO it. Nice crit, by the way. Completely useless. I'm gonna send out the Simeon. And you might be thinking, wait, well, there's one more Pokemon. I wonder what that could be. Could it be the car itself? Nah, surely that's not a Pokemon. And lo and behold, actually, that, that's a lie. It is the Pokemon. We are now fighting a Starmobile, which has a lot of interesting mechanics behind it. Uh, one of the biggest ones is the fact that it cannot get crit. You cannot crit it. It has stupidly amount of HP, and for some reason, if you use a move like Echo the Voice, it will just uh, reset its base power back down to 40. For some reason. Again, no idea why. But it just does that. There's just a lot of mechanics. But to emphasize on the HP. This Starmobile. Has. How much HP does it have? I forgot. I, it has a lot of HP. And when I mean by a lot. It has. 408 HP. Right? At level 55. To give you context. Blissey, the highest Pokemon, the highest Pokemon HP stand in the game. At the same level, if you give it max HP investment, has 397. At the same level. Actually, no, it's not 55, it's 56. So Blissey actually has slightly more HP. So Blissey has 404. This thing has 408. This, the fighting car, has more HP than a max HP Blissey at the same level. Just thought that you guys should know about that. Anyway, oh yeah, here's Penny. Remember Penny? She's a character that we, that we technically only see for the first time two hours and 13 minutes in the game. Just, you know, fun. Yeah, so now we're going to go into the poison base and we're going to hope that it's not raining. Because if it's raining, we are leaving, by the way. So yeah, remember that center that we grabbed just before the Steel Titan? Yeah, that's yeah. This is the reason why it's the closest center to the Poison Base, which we'll be adding up next. I love the point. So, the reason why I'm hoping that it's not raining is because if it chooses to rain, we will be seeing a PowerPoint presentation.
And while that would be funny, we do want to go fast. So we have to hope from now until after the poison base is done that it doesn't rain. If it rains just before we enter the poison base, it is actually a good idea to leave and come back just because it does save time. Because it makes this entire- this is arguably the laggiest area in the entire game. In fact, I would say it is the laggiest area because if it rains, it just becomes a slideshow. But yeah, we're going to be doing the exact same thing again. This is called the Starfall Cleanup for a reason. We are going to every single base in the Starfall Street and we're cleaning it up. We're just all but one. There's one base that we'll do because we want to do that last. It's actually the base that's actually kind of hard to deal with as a fighting type, unironically. Uh, is there a range here? There is a range, okay. Not in this fight, but there is actually a range that another range is coming up. And I like the other two ranges where if I miss it, it's, it's, uh, I could have just went for a more powerful move. This one, there's no other choice. I have to hit the range, otherwise I'm taking an extra turn. And actually, this is the worst range to miss. So hopefully we don't miss it. I mean, all I have to do is hit a 15 and 16. What, what, how, how hard is that? I mean, we've all hit 15 and 16 before, right? Surely I'm not the only one. Alright, so, last opportunity, now at this point, if it rains, I'm screwed. Thankfully it's not rain, so we're, we're fine here. You know, that's a, uh, whew, save. So, we're gonna do this base. We also have to be careful where we end the poison base. So, to explain that a little bit more, where we end the poison base, will give us a different load time for the fight to, for the poison base fight to start. So that's gonna be fun. Ah, uh, that's not good. Well, Crocola, you've done your job, you're gonna die to a ground type now. Everyone, like, give 07 to the Crocolo. He's done his job. Sadly, he had to fight. Sadly, he had to see his demise to a ground type. Uh, where is grass type? There you are. If I actually stand here, they both should be spawned in, which means we actually have finished the base right now. Good. And we want to stand roughly around here. If you stand in this courtyard, you, it's going to be fine. You're going to be fine. The main reason is there's going to be a load time that will change depending on where you are standing. So if I've done this right, the load time here should be three seconds. So. One, two, three. If you are standing further away, the load changes from 3 seconds to 17. You will literally lose 10 seconds because the game said so. Also, this load for some reason just takes a bit of time as well. But yeah, that's uh, the main issue. Now, another thing in this that I didn't mention is I'm actually way lower level than what most other treasure hunt runners do. And the advantage of this is that it does save time, but there is one 
one little disadvantage about about that. And that is this Starmobile, if my attack stat is bad, which it is, is a range to kill. So hopefully we just hit the 15 and 16. Yeah, we kill the mock, we kill the skunk tank. The river room we do not wing attack because it's actually part steel type. So because of its part steel type, we can actually low kick instead. And then here comes the actual river room, which is the Starmobile. This is actually the worst range to miss. And uh, the reason is because of its ability Toxic Debris, which uh, activates when a physical move hits. And uh, if I have to hit it twice, it'll activate twice. Thankfully, we hit the range. Despite the fact that the fight's over, the game still wants to put the Toxic Debris on the floor. It's, it's funnier on a different fight. But yeah, it's just one of those weird things. But as now, the second uh, base done, and that means five, seven, 14 gym, 14 badges down, four more to go. The end is in sight, but only for like another one and a half hours. Because despite the fact that we have, uh, you know, almost all the badges, we have three completely separate end games we have to deal with. My curiosity. Huh, lol, I'm ahead of my PB. That's funny. So uh, even though I do have my splits open, I'm actually not comparing to my best. I'm act or my personal best. I'm actually comparing to my worst. Just so I feel good about myself. If you ever want to feel good at yourself about a run, just compare yourself to your worst splits. And as long as you don't see yourself go into the negative color, you should feel good about yourself. Main reason why I decided to compare to my worst, it's the only comparison that I have that's actually like 340. Unfortunately, a skunk tank will never be seen ever again. That skunk tank is gone. But hey, we have a Coridon. This is the reminder to uh, pet your Coridon. Everybody, always take care of your Coridons. Your trusty companion. Okay, anyone else asking if you want me to pet the Coridon? I will pet the Coridon. Actually, I might spend the entire Ghost Gym just petting the Coridon. Also, very, very important, before you fly, look down. It makes this menu less laggy. Very important. Turn the camera down, otherwise the map will be very laggy. Anyway, now we're back to the grass gym because now we're gonna do the fire base. Yes, I do mean that this is the softball cleanup because, well, next up is the fire base, and I forgot I have turbo. B I have B still set onto turbo. Fun. Should probably have mentioned this way earlier, but we do use a turbo controller for this run. We have allowed turbo, meaning that if you want to run turbo, you can, and it is uh implied that. You probably should. It is allowed on our main leaderboards for all categories.
So yeah, we're also learning about apparently like these are what used they used to be bull used these are people that used to be bullied, but then they bullied the bullies out of school, and now they've become the rebellious gang that we now have to deal with. And we have to convince them to go back to school. What you know. Pretty difficult task. Also, fun fact, Houndo Houndow is on the screen. Sometimes the Pokemon is in the screen, in the frame, and then not in the frame. Just a funny little quirk in this game. That is true, any percent does reset their console, this does not. Uh, the reason why this does not is primarily due to how the story is done. We do not want to reset our file, simply because uh, we do not want to restart our save. So none of a single story does and Treasure Hunt also doesn't. In theory, due to the fact that I do have autosave just in case the game crashes, I could actually have reset it ages ago, but I chose not to because that's not what Treasure Hunt normally does. But normally you would reset just before the fighting base because that would be roughly the two hour mark. Or in any percent, it'll be the three hour mark, which is where the game really starts to go downhill from there. The single story categories do not re need to reset as they are short enough to be done in one single go. So the point where you get the diminishing returns, it's kind of roughly stated that roughly the three hour mark is where you need to start consider a reset. For this category, I will not be resetting. Because uh, I don't think you need to. I don't think you save back enough time with a reset with this category. Although I could be wrong. So if someone wants to test that, really? I'm not doing that, hold on. Right. We do not want the cro our crocodile to face a ground type for obvious reasons. Yeah, just as Farah said, we do not want to reset because of Single, because of single story reasons, because getting a save file for single story is a pain. Especially for some categories where the stat required is very high. Especially if uh, you're doing Path of Legends, that stat requirement is very uh, unreasonable. Good. There we go. Also, they gave us 10 minutes to do all these all these bases. It takes less than one to do them. I genuinely want to know if it, if someone actually ran out of time here. I genuinely want to know. I'd be very surprised. Anyway, uh, here's Mela, uh, but uh, normally, like, these bases are meant to be, like, super powerful things, but, uh, yeah, she's only level 24, I think? Uh, Mela is, is level 26. Oh, we're gonna get the funny thing where it rains and sunshines at the same time? That would be funny. <laughs> ah, that's f oh, I love this game. The reason why this works, by the way, is because the rain happened after the fight starts. So now there's a rain and sun <laughs> happening at the same time. <laughs> I love this game. Yes. Nice rain and sunshine at night. Definitely nothing wrong happening there. <laughs> no, if the rain spawned before the fight actually started, 
Uh, it will. Um, the the drought will fail because the overworld weather will actually have less priority than the. The overall weather will have more priority than the fight weather. <laughs> yep, Groudon and Kyoga are doing a midnight fight, which actually ends up just being having a disco effect, which actually does look cool. Yeah, apparently Groudon, Kyoga, and Paldea are fighting, but Rayquaza is nowhere to be seen. Also, fun little fact about that cutscene, which I've learned from uh, Boundary Break. Those models are actually rendered in this area. It just get rid of the all the weather effects just to make sure it looks like it's the past and add like that vignette effect, which I find really cool. So those models, those four models of oh, nice weather change, by the way. Those four models, or those four and five models of like the, the base people are actually like rendered. They're just put in a place where we can't see them. Which is kind of cool. Anyway, oh yeah, well I need to remind myself. I need to do the safe strat because I do need this run to finish. So, I'm about to do a shop that, in normal treasure hunt and any percent runs, you would 100% skip. And not do, because you if you see a Flamigo this bad, it's a reset. But, because I can't reset, I'm going to have to fix this Flamigo somehow, and thankfully there's a very easy way to do so. In a old version of the route that I was planning, we were buying bottle caps because I thought maybe buying caps of being significantly lower level would actually save us time. The answer is, unfortunately, caps are kind of slow to buy and slow to use. So for the most part, we don't really want to be buying caps with, again, the exception of a marathon run where we kind of have to. So there is an advantage of buying bottle caps, which is the fact that in the ghost gym, where we would normally sell a bunch of items, we don't have to sell a single item. So that will be a nice thing to have. Now some nice map location. So here we're going to go to Kaskarafa North to buy ourselves two bottle caps, as this is the best time and place to buy one. And then we'll be heading into the dark base. Again, PB attempts would not buy this, but math attempts, I would buy it. So here, you remember Victory Road, we go into this shop right here, at, only after you get six gym badges, which we have seven, so we go into the wrong store because I'm an idiot. Buy, bottle, buy two bottle caps. And fly down. Normally I would not buy that. For this category, normally I would not buy that in this category, but due to my stats being pretty low, and also the fact that I do need to actually finish this run, we will be buying it for this run. It also makes the end game very consistent from this point onwards. So I don't have to worry about anything. For those who don't know what bottle caps do, they are an item introduced in Generation 8, but only available in the post game of Gen 8, so it's actually useful in Gen 9. Well, actually, no, bottle caps introduced in Gen 7, but they were very hard to obtain in Gen 7 and very hard to obtain in Gen 8, where you give it to a certain person and that person will fix your IV to make it 31, just like that. And we'll be using it for both our attack and our speed to fix those stats. Also, here's a macro that we're going to have to fight, which is like the easiest there. The darker base is honestly kind of like one of the easiest. Yeah, Gen 7 also required level 100. Gen 8 also required level 100, I believe. But Gen 9, thankfully, only requires you to be level 50. 
to also utilize the, the bottle caps as well. So that's also a very nice change from this game. And also the fact that we can buy bottle caps ever since the sixth gym leader. So ever since after Tulip, we could have bought bottle caps, but we decided to buy it in, gen in here because it's the most convenient. So this is the last base of the Star Fall cleanup. We also do this because getting LP is essentially in this game. LP is a secondary currency, but for speedrunners, LP is just money V2, just a secondary money that we're also going to be using to buy vitamins later. Or well, very shortly, actually. After this fight, we'll be doing some shopping. So yeah, this is the only base where for some reason you are facing the opposite direction to where you need to go. Don't ask why. Every base, they make you face the base door, but not this one. Don't ask why. And we are essentially going to do the exact same thing. Similar to Poison Base, there is a specific space, we specific place we need to be at the very end. If we are not, we're going to have a long load screen. So we're doing this path specifically so that we end at that location. We might have to fight more things because this is kind of not great spawns that we're getting. Yes, okay, we're gonna have to make a bit of a detour because we are a bit low on Pokemon. We would like to see triple spawns and quadruple spawns of Pokemon, but so far we're getting a lot of doubles. Aurora. Oh yeah, we should be fine now. Because then we can send out against you. Send out against you. And send out against you. Good. And that is the uh, dark base done. And this fight does have a small difference. If you are scrappy, this is again going back to the scrappy and tangle theme. If your ability is scrappy, you can wing attack both the, the Pawniard and the, the big Starmobile. But if you are tangled feet, because the Starmobile has the ability Intimidate, you must use acrobatics on the on the on the Dark Starmobile. Yeah, only has a point. Yeah, he only has a pony out on the Starmobile. Funnily enough, I don't even think you can get pony at this early in the game. Like, I think they only. Actually, they actually I might be wrong with that. I think they could spawn here, but I only know of one spawn location. That's literally right next to the fighting base. Yes, also, we, despite the fact that we are a fighting type, we will not be using dark type moves. We will not be using fighting type moves because, again, super effective moves are slightly slower. There's Intimidate. We get, we get stopped, and we get to use the attack. And that is Giacomo of Team Star. Now it's time for us to fly, to fly all the way to do Ghost Gym. So the main reason why we do the Starfall bases first and then do Ghost Gym is mainly so that we get to get a bunch of money and because we're going to be uh, spending that money. Also, the TMs can be used to sell as well. However, because we are using bottle caps, we actually have enough money after bottle caps to buy everything without selling, so we can actually do sell skip. 
Only very high echelon Flamigos can also do Cell Skip in normal Treasure Hunt at any percent. And in fact, it's easier to do it in Treasure Hunt if you do the risky catch Flamigo strat, where you get yourself an Ultra Ball and a free Carbos, meaning there's more Flamigos that arguably can do that strat of skip shopping. It does save a significant amount of time to skip selling, which is nice. But it isn't, it's not something that all Flamigos can do, unfortunately. It's something that the Japanese runners have done, from what I've seen. They do in any percent, go high, high level, but they skip selling a lot of items. In fact, sometimes they skip selling altogether. And so what I tried to do is combine my strat of low level plus their strat of buying less, which uh, leads to some very risky situations in in-game. But we will not be dealing with that today because I did buy myself the bottle caps, which is a bit of a slow detour. Unfortunately. So we get a little bit more of Team Star Law. We get the most important thing, which is 10,000 LP. And we are going to be continuing onwards. I was thinking of like doing a funny bit where during the next gym, I just leave the controller on turbo on auto fire turbo and just leave. But I'm not going to do that. Because the next gym is quite literally fam like the next gym is considered by a lot of the stuck community just like the freest toilet break in the world. Especially if you have turbo. Because you don't have to do anything. So here, we're going to go into the ghost gym, into the ghost gym town. We're going to talk to the guy with the Obama snow, because that guy is our bottle caps guy. He's going to make, he's going to fix up our Flamigo. And then... We want to use two bottle caps, we want to raise attack, we want to raise speed, and go ahead and use that. And there we go, we now have Flamigo, whose attack and speed is now perfect. Now we're going to go into the into this shop right here and go ahead and uh, buy some vitamins. We're going to first buy uh, four proteins with our LP. Um, oops, they're meant to buy that with LP. Fine. And then that is eight proteins. We need to buy how many again? Nine. And then six extra attacks. A bit unoptimal on my shopping, but it's fine. Get, get me on Karai. Or... God damn, I moved. I shouldn't have moved. Please, I want to ride my dragon. Please. Thank you. The Karai did not want to be... Uh, Right on. But yeah. The main thing about this fight is that thanks to pretty much having a Scyther, you can just wing attack plus acrobatics everything in the gym. And you do not have to do anything. Because the entire gimmick of this is double balance, and it's the main reason why we A caught Hulucha or Scyther, and B caught taught Scyther slash Hulucha acrobatics. So that's essentially the main reason why we have both Cypher, either Cypher or Halucha. They both work. The only thing to note about Cypher versus Halucha is the final double that you have to face. And in the final double, you will have to face either in the final double, there's a Drift Blim and a Sableye. And sometimes your Halucha will not be able to KO the Sableye. But aside from that, we just do this for pretty much the entire gym. So 
That is, of course, Gym 1. Now it's time for Fight 1. And the reason why it is actually very important that we do actually KO all the Pokemon in one hit. That is very important. If you don't, there is a gi the gimmick of this is that there's a crowd that cheers for us. And if we don't finish it in a turn, we will lose a turn. We will lose a huge amount of time on the animations. Just of people cheering, which we do not want to see. So that's why it's very important that we one-shot everything. If your Halucha isn't powerful enough to KO Sableye in one hit, the backup is to use Wing Attack on Sableye and to Acrobatics the Drifblim. The Drifblim won't die, but its only offensive move is Self-Destruct, so it'll KO itself. So we don't have that issue. But because we caught Cypher, it is more consistent that you get to go for the fast strat and you don't have to seize uh, the self-destruct. Because I've done the damage calcs, only 49 and 50 Cypher level 49 and level 50 cypher have a chance not to ko but only if they're minus attack because my cypher's 51 it will no matter what cypher i have no matter how bad this cypher is it will always ko the sable eye So that's why I literally say that this entire first part of a gym is literally just mash A, win games. And that is the... Uh, ghost gym test done. The final gym test we have to do in the entire game. As we also get introduced to a top tier gym leader. I love the fact that she's a rap that she's a rapper. She's also actually related to another one of your school teachers. Which is also kind of interesting. Obviously, nothing competes to Larry. Larry is obviously the best gym leader. He's the best gym leader. Like, he takes you out on food? He's the perfect gentleman. Anyway. Oh yeah, because we did the gym test first before going into the gym, we also see this little conversation with Nimona that we can't skip anyway, and then... After that... It's time for us to actually do the actual gym test, which... Does have an interesting strat for it. It's not just hold A win games, there is actually a... A thing we actually have to do in the correct order. So here we have a rap battle going on. And we get to see the dialogue is actually kind of funny. Obviously they can't do like real rap because then uh, this game will go from a 3 to a 12 almost immediately, but you know. Gotta keep, gotta keep it child friendly for, so that Pokemon can sell as much copies as they can. But then we go ahead and, uh, you know, do a gym. And yes, the gimmick of this entire gym fight is that it we're doing a double fight, so that's what we're going to also be doing here. And also the crowd cheering mechanics. So this is where I should probably explain the crowd cheering mechanics. We want to avoid most of them. There's one we cannot avoid, but there's most that we can avoid. So the crowd will cheer depending on certain circumstances happening. And we want to avoid all but one, which is of course KOing the opponent's Pokemon. So 
there are plenty of activations for the crowd and we want and yeah how we do this fight we avoid all of them so turn one we're going to wing attack you and we're actually going to air slash the, the mimic you because if mimic you doesn't attack that's obviously faster we just want to use a move on the mimic you to break its disguise as we KO Burnett, as Burnett does have Icy Wind, which is a slow move to use. So here we're going to use Air Slash. Has a chance for it to flinch. 30% chance. Don't get it, that's fine. Then here comes the Houndstone. We're going to get rid of the Houndstone, but we are not going to get rid of the Mimikyu. So the Mimikyu will stay for one more turn, and the reason why we do this is when... She Rhyme sends out Toxtricity. If it's the only Pokemon, then it will be. Then she'll have a text box for it. But if it's another Pokemon's in play, she won't do it. So here we're going to Wing Attack the Houndstone and we're going to X Scissor the Mimikyu. We want to do a bit of damage to the Mimikyu, but not enough to kill it. Not enough to get it to yellow. So we're going to actually X Scissor. This is faster than Swords Dance. If you just want to play it safe, just Swords Dance. Because if you accidentally crit the Mimikyu, it will go into yellow and it will activate the crowd cheering. So here, she sends out Toxtricity with no text boxes, so now we can just spam A and win the game. If you have Holucha, what you would do on the turn that I exit her, you would use a fighting move against the Mimikyu, so you don't do any damage to it. Essentially, you want to keep the Mimikyu alive for one extra turn before you actually uh, kill it. Once the Toxtricity is in play, then you can uh, take out the Knockout. It, is, it ends up being slightly faster. And that is the fight done. That is the final gym leader, and we have now 17 of our 18 badges. And now it's time for us to do the final badge of this game. The final badge of this game, which arguably is the hardest and the trolliest of the three of all the badges in the entire game. Aside from Dumdozer, that's still pretty trolly. And now they say we're going to have to fight the Elite Four, which we will, but not quite yet. We're going to fight the Elite Four later. We still have one more gym badge to collect, and then we'll be doing all the end games back to back to back to back in a kind of haphazard order. So now we've done... Yeah. Now time to fly back to that random center in the mountain that we grabbed earlier for Dondoza, which is also the same center we use for uh, the ferry base. So we're gonna head, now we're going to head towards the north. We're going to apparently encounter a Cub Chew, because of course I did. So that leads to three encounters this entire speedrun, which is not bad. This is like the final place that you can get encounters before you are fully free. Here we're just going to run down the mountain. We're then going to run about here, and then we're going to do a high jump. And if I did this correctly, we should just slide down here. No, I just landed in the one place where I can stand on. Nice. Then we're going to avoid that. That Glalie that was there went out of exist, blipped out of existence. We're going to grab the guard spec that's very important for this base, and that's going to be that. I should probably mention a difference in any percent and treasure hunt. In any percent, we need 7x attacks. In treasure hunt, we only need 5, but I buy 6 because buying 6 is faster than buying 5. 
in treasure hunt in any percent you would use that extra 1000 lp that you have to buy an extra x attack but i don't need to do that for treasure hunt so here we're gonna go forward we're gonna go forward a little bit and then drop down and then we're gonna get to kind of like the worst grunt fight in the game simply put there's a morgrim it has prankster and it has uh, three things that it can do it could attack and thus we'll just kill it immediately it can use nasty plot which wastes time but it's not the biggest deal and it can use torment which means that we can't wing attack twice So hopefully we just see the um, the not na the not pranks the move, which we did, which is nice. That's 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 a nice time save because now we can just go ahead and wing attack the next Pokemon, the Hatchrim. Watch you, which is also a pretty easy KO. One little fact: this Hatchrim's pretty bulky in like other categories but thankfully in any percent we are so high level that it does not matter now i need to remind myself that there is one thing that is very important that i do it is the fact that i need to menu and i need to give the vitamins that i bought earlier to my flamigo and also teach close combat we this is a sadly the last time we'll be using wing attack as now its power is now gonna start to show or rather its lack of power sadly 60 base power is not gonna quite cut it so bag uh proteins and carbos and close combat Close combat is a very, very powerful move, but of a very long animation, so we'll be using it sparingly. We don't need close combat for any of the fights here, but in Elite Four, we will be using it a couple of times. So we're definitely going to need it. Alright, so here, final time we're going to be using Starfall bases. Main thing to note is that, despite the fact that Flamigo doesn't like fairy types, it's actually pretty fine against fairy types. Foy Coco is good against most fairy types, but not all fairy types. We do like to see Tinker Tinks, very convenient, because then Crocodile can actually do super effective damage to them and actually not take that much damage in return. And we're also going to be following this pathway that I'm doing so that we can avoid lag. I'm actually going to... Well, I was going to leave these Tinker Tongues for Foy Coco, but actually, the next one's just spawns. So we're actually getting pretty lucky with spawns. Because Quaco, wait, this this Crocolo is surviving for a long time, but sadly it will die to that Curlia. Most certainly. Not that that matters. And it actually survived the entire time. Wow. That's uh that Crocolo was like standing on it. It was like, nope, I'll be useful. Yeah, final base time, final leader. We do this last because sad because it's fairy types and fairy types at a high level is actually a bit problematic for Flamigo. So that's why we do this last. So fairy base not very much of a the, the fight here is it has the main issue is with a lot of the Pokemon here, it has the, it has a lot of move, they a lot of Pokemon here have a lot of moves that like to decrease your stats, specifically your attack stat. So, we're gonna have to deal with that. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just knock out the Azumarill, we do not want to set up on it because this thing has huge power, meaning it could do a lot of damage. Instead, we'll be setting up on the Wigglytuff instead because the Wigglytuff does significantly less damage. We'll first be using a guard spec, which essentially prevents all of our damage from all of our stats from being reduced for the next five turns, which is going to be a nice thing. 
It does use play rough, which does can have a chance to drop our attack stats, so it's also nice to have the guard spec. We're then also going to set up an X attack as well, so that way we can one-shot this fairy star mobile. There are riskier versions of the fight that you can go for, but I do not go for them, even in world record attempts. And then here we spam acrobatics and win the game. And this is the last time we'll be hearing the Starfall uh, boss theme. Which is actually a pretty good theme. And then, yeah. You can technically do this at plus zero, and it would be the same amount of turns. But you have to see this attack. And if it goes for magical talk and gets the confusion, you have to now risk confusion chance, which is uh, not great. So... I do the super safe version, which is guard spec X attack, but you can just guard spec and go. And you can also just go as well. But if you go, you there's a chance that you get baby dollized by the, the dark spun. So we don't want to do that either. And that is uh, Ortega. Now I have to do a thing because I actually do the end game in a slightly different order than what my splits used to do. So I'm going to have to skip a bunch of splits until we get to the point where it normalizes. But yeah, that is all 18 badges. Now we have to do all the end games. And yes, all the end games does take roughly 15 minutes to do. Primarily because this cutscene takes a while to do. Like a lot of the times it's been, been be doing because of cutscenes, especially like in the final stories of each of the categories, but we don't have to deal with that. Well, we have to deal with that, but Right now, we're going to be heading to the Elite Four. We'll be doing Nat first. Similar to, like, the whole game, the end games we can choose to do in any order. Timing only ends on the final title card ending, so we can choose which title card we want to do. And how we've done it is we will be seeing the Starfall Street title card last. We'll be seeing the Path of Legends title card first, we'll be seeing the Starfall Street title card last. In any percent, that would not be the case. In any percent, we'll be seeing Victory Road first and Path of Legends fast, but we'll explain why it's slightly, it's done differently between the two later on. But that's not a concern. Yeah, this final thing. Nice rain. If it rains here, it's also pretty bad. But thankfully, it rained afterwards. So, you know, we don't have to deal with that. So, yeah, now we get the, uh... The... Shout-out of the fact... Not the shout -out, but the thing. Yeah, no. Treasure Hunt does not include Area Zero. It is just the main three storylines. It does not include the final storyline, The Way Home. That is not included in this category. So here, we're going to fly, and because we grabbed it earlier, we will be going to the Pokemon League. It also, it's also if you have, if you weren't here on the start, it also does not start at the beginning of the game. It starts after we get our right Pokemon. So here, we're going to go into our bag. We're going to deposit Cypher and Crocolo. You've done your purpose. And now we're going to go into the Elite Four. By the way, if you didn't know, the game fully heals you before you enter the Elite Four. So you do. So even if you take any damage in the fairy base, you do not have to heal it off. They will f fully heal you before the elite four.
The amount of full heals this game gives you is very generous. Which, okay, which again, we as speedrunners abuse. So, this is the Elite Four. The first thing we actually have to do is answer an interview. And the interview questions, I mean, they're kind, it's a cool concept. I really do like it, but as speedrunners, we are going to do what most people do in interviews anyway and just lie to, our, uh, lie to their faces. So the first thing we're going to say is we're going to, we walked here, which we didn't, by the way. We flew here. And this one, we are in this school, so we have to go down one. And we have to say we became champion. You cannot do this for fun, apparently. We want to do here to become even stronger. And we're going to say the hardest gym is the psychic one, despite the fact that it wasn't. Simply put, the menu inputs are faster. All you have to do is press up once, up once, and then up twice. Then after we say that, we're then going to say our starter Pokemon was the Fire Croc. And we're just going to continue there for Mashing A, so we don't have to worry about inputs anymore. We're going to repeat one of the questions earlier, and we're going to answer it correctly, because it's just the first one. And then we're going to give them the biggest... Big, give her the biggest lie we have ever said. The question is, do we like Pokemon? We say yes. Because let's be real, anyone who speedrun Pokemon doesn't actually like Pokemon. Let's be real. I'm kidding, it's a, it's a joke. But yeah, but fun fact, if you do say no to that question, you will be kicked out of the interview. If you say no, you don't like Pokemon, you will be sent to the beginning of the game. You will be sent to the beginning, you have to do the entire interview again. That's now the interview questions done. Now it's time for the first Elite Four member of Rika. The one that trolls you the most. This Elite Four member, unfortunately, is the one that can troll you the most, simply because of two Pokemon. One Pokemon who can just, for some reason, just Stone Edge crit you, and the other Pokemon that can just protect. Hopefully, we will see neither. I will also say this right now, every Elite Four member and champion that we will fight here will be a six-turn fight, with the exception of Poppy, who will be a five-turn fight. So, Rika, she will be a six-turn fight for a couple of reasons. Well, actually for one reason. All the Pokemon here will be five with the exception of Champion, who will have six. And they'll also specialize a type based on one of the Titans. So here we're going to go for Acrobatics. And then after the Wish Cash Acrobatics, we'll then be spamming Low Kick for the rest of the fight. Because it's the fastest move animation in the entire game. We're gonna low kick the next five, the next four Pokemon five times. And the reason why it's five times is because Donphan has the ability Sturdy, of which we is nothing that we can do. We do have double kick, but sadly it's not strong enough to actually uh, one hit KO. So we're just gonna have to take the two hit KO, and that crit it's bad because I in made this because I got a Sturdy encounter, which is a bit slow. You do not want to crit the first fight, the first phase of Donphan, because then you get the sturdy text. Nice game. And then here comes uh, Dog Trio, which will also low kick. This thing has no defenses whatsoever, so I don't even know the base power of low kick, but it's probably going to die anyway. And then we have the biggest troll of them all, Claude Zaya. In my any percent attempts, my gold still does not have a non-protect Claude Zaya. Uh, this one I do believe has a non-protect Claude Zaya, but... Yeah. 
We don't know what the probability of it going for Protect, so I'm just going to assume it's a 50-50 shot. Whether it goes for Protect or not. No Protect Cloth? No! This is like five times in a row I've seen Protect on this thing, so that's fun. As you see, we are wasting a turn of time. Thankfully, it doesn't... The AI never goes for a double Protect, so... You only waste one time, not two. One turn, not two. But yeah, that is the first Elite Four member down. Now, if you remember a long... No, Low Kick just kills. Everything is heavy enough for Low Kick to case. Low Kick does not have a base damage, no. Low Kick's base damage is based on weight, on the opponent's weight stat. So if they are heavy, it will do more damage. If they are light, they will do less damage. Now, a long time ago, when before fighting base, I gave my experience in a specific order. The reason is when I get to level 80. So right here, we are level 79, but after we fight the Copperaja, we will be level 80, and that is the exact time I brought it to be level 80, so that we can one-hit KO the Corviknight more consistently. So the reason why I did the experience in the way that I did is so that we can then be 80 at the exact right time. It also has a second use as well. Yep, here's Kappa Raja. We are 79 before and we are 80 after. If we do not give that 6,000 experience, we will not be level 80 for Kappa Raja, for Kappa Knight. So it's a good thing that we were level 80. Yeah, we just barely get it. You also will not get level 80 if you do not, if you do the Grunt Fight before. If you do the Grunt Fight after the candies, you will not get there either. But yeah, we use close combat sometimes depending on your protein get. Sometimes depending on your protein count, the Corviknight can be arranged. Depending on how risky you want to go. Anyway, here's the second use of Double Kick. Because this Magnezone has Sturdy, and if you accidentally do not click Double Kick, you will die. So it's very important that you do click Double Kick there. There we go ahead and close combat the Bronzong. And then finally we low kick the... Uh... The Tinkerton. Thankfully our experience in this doesn't actually matter too much, but I will sh I will definitely tell a difference between any percent and treasure hunt. Because this experience is also very specific because we also get to 82 by another specific fight in any percent. Treasure hunt doesn't matter. Yep, here's Tinkerton. Thankfully, they Terra Steel, because if they don't, then, uh, you know, we'd have problems. But, you know, they do choose the Terra Steel. And that is a one shot. Again, Poppy being the only Elite Four member that we get to do a. Um. Poppy's the only Elite Four member we get to do it in five turns. Every other Elite Four member and champion, we have to do it in six. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention something. They have a child in the Elite Four. All the other students are so bad, they have a child for the Elite Four member. And also, apparently they don't have enough Elite Four members, so Larry has to work double time. Both as a gym leader and as an Elite Four member. Sorry for Larry. He has to work so many jobs. 
And he's like so depressed. Home luck. So here's the second fight of Larry. His entire thing is... That now he's using a different type, which is the flying type. But uh, this fight is actually the freest fight in the entire game. Because all you have to do is set up an X attack, then click acrobatics, then you win the game. In fact, depending on which move this uh, Tropius does, which is Sunny Day, you will not take a single point of damage. So yeah, now it's just you spam A in this fight, you win the game. Also, one other thing about Scrappy versus Tangled Feet here, it does not matter. This fight literally does not matter if you have Scrappy or Tangled Feet. Because the fight's the exact same. You still have to X attack. The main issue, the main reason why you still have to X attack is actually... There are two... I said earlier there are two Pokemon in the entire game that resist a fighting, fighting, co fighting, flying combination. The first was the Watchall in Iona's gym. And now it's specifically this Oracorio who uses the electric form. If it was any other form, we could probably have gotten away with not using an X attack. But sadly, we have to do that. I'll also I love how there was a sunlight inside a room. Despite the fact this is a very enclosed room. Just, again, don't, don't ask. Also, Spider-Man meme. Except now he's wearing a fancy hat. Sadly, our go for me is just better. There we go. And that is the third Elite Four member down. Now I'm gonna be a little bit... Do I take... Nah, I'll be a little bit risky. Uh, normally if you take in any damage, you should heal. But I'm gonna be a bit risky. If I do get an unfortunate circumstance in the next fight, I do... I did pick up the Forest Door, so we're not gonna be in the end of the world. So we're going to have now the final Elite Four member, Hassel, the Dragon type. And uh, yeah, we're just not going to get the unfortunate thing that can sometimes happen in this game. Right? That's how it works. We're not going to get it. We are 100% not going to get it. Not gonna happen. We're just gonna X attack. We're gonna acrobatics the first three Pokemon. We're gonna low kick the last two, and nothing bad will happen. All right. The second Pokemon is definitely not gonna troll me. Definitely not gonna happen. Right. We're going to X attack. It's going to air slash because we have taken a bit of damage. We're going to live the air slash because we do. We actually would have died to a crit, but you know, it's fine. But it's not going to happen. Great. Nice crit. Not necessary. Damn it, it did happen. Yeah, so you can get poisoned. And you, I'm now going to have to waste a turn healing, which is, you know, unfortunate. It is a 30% chance to poison, which is like, this is like one of the biggest time wasters, and it happens at the very end of the run, which is really unfortunate. 
So I'm gonna have to go back. I'm gonna have to pick up the. I'm gonna use the full restore. It's the reason why I picked it up. This can't happen. But it's pretty slow to do. Nice miss on Dragon Rush, by the way. Oh yeah. Sadly, we do get like one of the slowest hassle fights, but yeah, it's kind of like one of the things. There is no run killers. There's just time waste. There's just pace killers in this game. And hassle is one of the biggest pace killers. It's not the biggest. There's one bigger. And we haven't gotten to that boss yet, but that boss did kill my any percent run yesterday. Or at least killed the pace that I had yesterday. Yeah, hassle can sometimes be a hassle to deal with. Thankfully, there's nothing else to deal with. We just low kick. We back Scalibur, and it is GG. Even if it terraces out of its ice typing, it's still gonna die to a low kick. Because even at 70, it dies to a low kick. So... 81? Yeah, that's not a problem. And that is... Yeah, so that's the Elite Four. After the Elite Four, we get fully healed again, because of course we do. Apparently, these little people are shocked, despite the fact that we just used one pink bird to sweep the entire thing. And speaking of sweeping the entire thing, the champion's a joke. As I said, the entire Elite Four and champion can be beaten in six turns. And what that means, and since Gita has six Pokemon, it means that I don't need to do a single turn of setup. That's how weak the champion team is. Also, the fact that we are higher level, that does actually help a ton, but... Four of her six Pokemon are weak to our type combination, and the other two are physically frail. So, you know, that helps. So here comes, like, the champion fight. The champion's gonna be, like... Uh... Yeah. It's nothing that... Oh, okay, that's an interesting glitch. That could sometimes happen. Random Rika just standing there for no reason. That's not intentional, by the way. She's not supposed to be there. Even despite this game patches so much stuff, with this stone glitch is galore. Yeah, but yes. But yes, if you're asking that question in chat, that is the it is the second answer because acrobatics is busted and low kick just kills everything that's fighting weak. Also, it's just weird that the champion team has a go-go. I just find that just incredibly weird. Like, it's just not strong of a Pokemon. Like, you think champion teams having, like, really, really strong, powerful Pokemon, and Go-Go's not really that, to be honest. And we have King Gambit, which should have been her ace, by the way, but nope, decided not to, because... Imagine fighting a Pokemon, and the last Pokemon is a Pokemon Supreme Overlord. Pokemon that gets a boost for every Pokemon that's fainted. That would be scary. Also don't know why she has a loser. Like, I like the fact that the Water Gym Leader has a loser, but just don't understand why she does. Like, I just think there's, like, better Pokemon that she can have.
And also, I have a lot of good chicks. Okay. I don't, I don't get it sometimes. But even without changing her team members, why did they put Glamora at the last Pokemon? Why? I know it looks cool and all, but... It has an ability that makes it perfect as a lead, and you put it as the last Pokemon? I don't get that. I mean, I kind of understand why they wanted to do a Rock-type, but still. Also, nice rain, by the way. And also, the dumb thing about this game, Toxic Debris still activates even when the game is over. I know why it does it. It's an ability that can still be useful after the Pokemon gets KO'd, but it's not useful. Alright, that's it. That is, uh, Champion done, but that is not the end of the Victory Road storyline. We still technically have one more fight to do, but we're not doing that yet. We're gonna get- we're gonna say, hey, Nimona, yeah, we become champion. Yeah, we'll fight you, just later. Because we don't want to fight you. Because it's fast to do it later. So yeah, Nimona is technically the true champion of the game, because even though she's not the top champion, she has a higher level team than Gita. Also, make sure you click Meza Goza because that is the correct setting. And it just saves time. Alright, now we have Dialogue. An exposition dump coming up. Just my favorite two things. Also, here's the hardest fly point in the game. Because for some reason they put the objective and the flight point right next to each other. And it is true, because all you have to do is hold left, you track evade the cutscene. Also, we somehow beat Arvin here, despite the fact we did everything else. Arvin's really slow getting to this lighthouse. Just out of curiosity, just out, just just to FYI, during the time, during the time that we beat the Dondos, that we went from Dondozo, we obtained five gym leaders, stopped the Team Starfall base, collected Team Starfall base badges, and. More impressively, and more impressively, we beat the Elite Four and became champion before Arvin got there. Ooh. I need to hurry up because I need to use the restroom as soon as possible. Oh boy. Yeah, I guess so. I guess he has an excuse. Twenty more minutes in this is oh, okay.
All right, so we have this whole plot line of, hey, we need to go to Area Zero, but uh, we're not doing that. We're just going to fight Arva and anyway, we're just going to dip. Uh, one thing to note, in any percent, you'd fight this storyline last because technically there is a phone call that you get if you don't do this last. But since that phone call is not part of the timing, we do this first because it's slightly more convenient. Similar to Gita, this fight is actually very, very simple. There's like nothing complicated about this fight. Do you need, need to get myself a little stretch after this fight? After this run? But yeah. This fight is almost over. Well, this run is almost over, definitely. We're reaching like the pure end game. There's only 20 more minutes. There's only like four fights. Four fights left in this game. Fun fact! It's still technically raining in the fight, even though the rain's gone. Not that that matters. So here, this fight, pretty simple. We're gonna acrobatics twice and then low kick the rest of the team. Then we're gonna acrobatics the second time. Goodbye, skill villain. And then from here on out, we're just gonna use low kick. Because that is enough damage to deal with everything. I almost double kick. That would have been slightly bad. Because that wouldn't have been enough damage. And yeah, this fight not very difficult. If you've seen the Path of Legends fight, this fight could be super difficult in that category. But thankfully, because we are way higher level, we don't. This fight is this fight's pretty easy. And down goes Cloister. We then get to 82 before boss diff, which doesn't really help much. One small difference. If you are Tangled Feet, you must close combat them a boss diff, but since we are uh, Scrappy, we can just low kick instead. And after this, we now have the first of our three title cards that allow us to complete the category. That being the title card of the Path of Legends complete. That is... Yeah, that's Arvind done. Arvind's been done. And say so he's gonna give us a conversation, it's like, Man, I couldn't beat you. And it's like, yeah, you don't have a pink bird. That's why you couldn't beat me. Do you like how his entire team is literally based off, is essentially all the Pokemon he's used in the other Titan fights? Which is kind of cool. Including the fact that his Greedent is zero IVs in all of his stats. But yeah, that is title card one. Now we go into Mezagoza and do the end game. And we have two choices that we can do. We could either fight Nimona, but we're not going to do that quite yet. We're going to instead do the thing where Penny said, Hey, uh, before we fight the Elite Four, please can you go to like the schoolyard at night? And I was like, Yeah, no, I want to do Elite Four Champion first. And here we have Mysterious Clive, who is on. Oh, who am I kidding? It's not a normal student anymore. He is actually the, the, the director the entire time. And now we have to fight the director because apparently he does not want us to do this, the final fight. And so he wants to pretend that he's the final boss of the category, even though he's not the final boss of the category. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a complicated mess. But uh, this fight is so complicated. It has so many complex strategies and like, it's so complicated this fight that it's gonna take forever to explain how this fight works and it's over. 
Yep, match A win games. Yeah, well, like to say that this fight is a bit complex, it's not. You click acrobatics, you win the game. I do want to say a little bit about experience. At Normally in any percent, you do this fight at 81. And the main difference is that you have to A, close combat the final Pokemon. But also, our ex if you thought our experience for... Uh, for the for Corviknight was tight, get to just 80 in any percent, that experience is also just enough to reach level 82 before Nimona, which helps with our Carvos calc calcs. In this category, because we do Arvin earlier, getting to 82 precisely is not important, but in this category, but in any percent, it does help. I did say there was nothing that can go wrong. Uh, that is a bit of a lie. Uh, remember our good friend 30%? It didn't happen, but this thing has effect spore. And if it puts you to sleep, you're wasting a turn. And you're losing so much time. But thankfully, uh, that didn't happen. So we can just uh, acrobatics the qu Quavel, and it is done. Funny that we see the Starfall straight meet. The Starfall Street main. On the screen. And this book, Quavo, we're gonna acrobatic. Despite the fact we may not have super effective typing, it do Oh, it is a range. Oh, I learned something new today. Still a range. That's fine, though. We can just acrobatics one more time. I thought it wasn't a range. Never mind. You should still close combat. Don't don't say what I say. You can just acrobatic spam. Still close combat for Quavo. Thankfully, it didn't go for Aqua Step, otherwise, we would have been in serious trouble. Anyway, two more fights to go. So, we get a thing, we get a funny little camera right here. Because I think Clavel's not supposed to be there, it's supposed to be a bit behind, but you know, it's kind of funny. But you know. I don't think Clavel's actually supposed to be standing exactly there, but you know. I think Clavel's supposed to be slightly more forward, but you know. The Pokemon's an indie, ge indie, co indie game company, they can't get positioning, right? And now, we're supposed to fight Penny. But we're not gonna do that. We kind of left the Mona kind of hanging, so uh, we're gonna do that instead. There's actually a reason why we're doing well, the reason. <laughs> so you're normally supposed to like uh, we need to go to the schoolyard and fight Penny. Now, fight. Sorry, Cassiopeia. Spoilers. But uh, now we're gonna find the Mona first. Main reason is that the ending of Nimona's story, Victory Road, actually puts us inside the school building. So doing that is actually faster. Also, I love the fact that I'm wearing the DLC school uniform, and I'm the only person who wears that uniform. In the entire game. I have the special uniform. Actually, no, he just told you that he wasn't anymore, and we still don't know. Also, fun fact about this fight, similar to the Starfall fights, you do not get experience in any of these in this fight at all. No EVs, no experience. Why? I don't know, but it would have been nice if we got the experience, though. Anyway, Nimona now finally gets to see our true power, which is our Flamingo, who is going to absolutely sweep the entire team. Because low kick is strong, acrobatics is strong, and close combat is strong. So we don't have to deal with any of that. So, yeah, 
And then after that, we go ahead and spam acrobatics for the next few. We are going to have to close combat the dunce boss because that thing is bulky despite the fact being a normal type. And also, the Mona is the highest level trainer we will ever fight. Who has the highest level Pokemon at level 66 with her entire team at being 65. But that doesn't matter because we are level 82. Dance boss, the only Pokemon that, we, yes, we still have to close combat. Luckily, it's still animation, but whatever. The slow part of close combat isn't actually the animation itself. It's actually not, it's actually similar speed of acrobatics, but it's just the defense drops are pretty slow to deal with. Fourth one, and then low kick. And then finally, we're going to actually close combat the Meowskarada because it's slightly faster than using acrobatics. Because the defense drops do not happen if it's the final turn of the game. Which again, they could have done that for Toxic Debris, but they don't do that for some reason. And yeah. Terra Grass, so we don't get the super effective tech. And also, this is just dead. The cold combat is strong. And then goes the Meowskarada. And then goes the Nimona fight. And now it's time. Yeah, now it's time for the true final boss, which ends up being Penny, which is great because it puts the best, the second best song in the category last. Unfortunately, we never get to hear the best song. Oh yeah, she's dabbing. So yeah. Final fight, and technically the final fight is the most trolly fight. It's the trolly of the most endgame fights. Rika has protect, uh... Hassle can poison you, Clavel can put you to sleep, uh, Penny has all Pokemon with baby doll eyes. And, uh, we are a physical attacker, so you know what? Uh, yeah. Also, for those wondering, yes, Satan and Toro battle theme best, but sadly he plays at five hours into the game. And if you're wondering what this pace is gonna be, it's actually gonna be a 352 pace. Which is not bad. PB is a 350. Which is actually the current world record. So 352. Pretty good. For a marathon. Again, Penny can like kind of screw it up. But it's definitely going to be a 352. Whether it be high 352 or low 352. Probably not going to be changed too much. So there's our second title card of the three and now it's time to do the third one so here to get to the schoolyard fast we go up left and down that does it in three inputs and oh i wonder who this could be definitely didn't see this character at all oh my god it's penny And as the EV backpack gave gave it away, her entire team is evolutions. And uh, they all have baby doll eyes, which is annoying. So we're gonna have to deal with that. Classic Pokemon twist. The character just we've seen, right? So there is something known as the perfect penny fight. However, it is pretty hard to get, and that is because we have to hope that we do not get baby doll eyes. If we don't get baby doll eyes, we get the perfect fight, which is just one turn setup and sweep. But if we do get baby doll eyes, then we have to do two turns of setup. So let's see, do we get the one turn or do we get the two turn? This is the final fight. So after this, uh, we have to then watch five minutes of dialogue, and then that will be time. And I'm not kidding about the five minutes, by the way. Ooh! 
Nice, we get the perfect penny fight. Because after that, we can just go. So normally, if you get baby doll eyes, you would have to set up to an another X attack, but thankfully, we did not. We didn't get baby doll eyes, so we can just attack. It's nice, and we just get to listen to the banging music. It's, it's acrobatics, the uh, umbreon, because we don't want to use a low kick, super effective animation. Low kick everything until you see Leafeon, and then use acrobatics. And that is a uh, GG's for the final fight. I will say the music does match better if we do use two X attacks, but it's fine. That's it. No baby doll eyes is very rare. Normally you see Leafy on baby doll eyes or even sometimes Sylvie on baby doll eyes. And yeah, that the end of the category will be in roughly five minutes because we have to see a bunch of dialogue into, into the title card. So during this time, I'll probably say all oh my goodbye so that that way we can then uh, pass it over to the next run, which is if I, if I get the schedule up. Uh... <laughs> Oh, yeah, Pokemon Battle Revolution. Uh, is it low? Any? Uh, what is the category? Low Sydney percent. So that will be coming up after we get to through the end game. Just to give uh, personal shout, but like personal shoutouts uh, and just like quick plugs while we go through the end game through the end dialogue here. Uh, you can follow me on Twitch, uh, twitchtv crisisaurus um, I do speedruns of this game, and I've been currently grinding any percent. Uh, yesterday I did a run that got 523.35, just 23 seconds off of record. And so I'm hoping one day, hopefully before DLC comes out, we get the record. But once DLC does come out, I will be speedrunning and grinding that until we get a good time and good record. I may also come back to this category as I am very close to a sub 350. So you might see more of this category as well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what uh, I will do. And yeah, this cutscene is still going, by the way. Uh, I should also mention this. After this, I will be writing this entire route down and I will be posting it in the Discord later. So if you want to run the advanced notes of Treasure Hunt, I will be posting it uh, later today once I actually uh, write it down. Uh, I've been working on this for a while, and uh, it does save time. It does save time over the old routes, but it is a bit riskier to run. So do that with your own. Do that at your own risk. But if you want to learn any of the other speedrun games. For Pokemon Scar and Pokemon Violet, uh, PSR Switch is the place to go. We have plenty of people who are friendly, and also we just have written notes for all the main categories. And of course, you can also just ask me any questions on Discord. I am there most of the time. If I'm on my desktop, I pretty much have a Discord open, so you can message me about help or root ideas or any of that stuff. 
And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much all the shoutouts I have for. Was I guess shoutouts to Headbuff for making the initial flamingo route, and then we just and then me just optimizing it more and more and more as time went on. And uh, yeah, so we finally got past uh, almost got past like this major chunk of dialogue. It does take ten minutes. Try five minutes to do this whole thing, and now we have to go do more dialogue talking by doing a button combination of DDR to get to the director's office. Do a little bit more talking, figuring out that apparently Penny decided to uh, hack the system. And turns out that she stole a bunch of LP. Yes. Yes. The way to remember the inputs to go to director's office is DDR. It's the fastest input, so it's just... If I didn't name my final split, oh my god, stop talking, I would have named it Dance Dance Re Re Revolution. There's a... yeah. Anyway, uh, here's the hardest menu of them all. Nice, I did it. As we go ahead and we head outside, have one phone call, one final phone conversation, and time will end on the final frame of the final title card appear disappearing. So we'll be heading all the way down, going down these steps that we just went through to fight Nimona, except we don't have to go nearly as far. And we talk to Penny, and after this, uh, it will be time, and uh, that will be uh, it for me. So I hope you all uh, enjoyed this treasure hunt run. I love Scarlet and Violet. I know it's different from a Pokemon game where the fights aren't that focus heavy. Instead, it's m more movement based in getting to places, but I still love this game, despite its many issues. And... I hope that I showed. I hope I showcased the love of this of this game to you guys, and hopefully we get more people to run this game. As I did say that, I do believe we have exactly 69 runners on the main leaderboard. So <laughs> there's a part of me that says no, but you know what? I'd rather have 420 runners than 69 runners. And time will be in three. In will be. Now. All right, that's it for me. I uh, hope you guys enjoy uh, the best, the rest of the marathon, and hope you guys enjoy Pokemon Battle Revolution. Bye. <laughs>